IT issues and re-innovation. For this session, we have announced us Dr. Nimai Chand Shaha as the chairperson and Dr. Tapul Kumar Varui as co chairperson. I am pleased to invite our honorable chairperson, Dr. Nima Chashaha, to please start on the dais and make your seats at peace. Dr. Nima Chashaha is an accomplished librarian and academician. Currently serving as an ethnic university librarian at Vishwavati University, Sanjeev. librarian at Kalna College, Nordman. We can increase his area of academic qualification, including a PhD, MLIC, Income, BA, BCPA, certification in German language and Hindi. He begins with a wealth of expertise to the field. With a portfolio career, he has authored 18 books, contributed to 16 book chapters, published numerous articles in various international, national, and regional journals and conference processes. His interest spans library administration, ICD publication in the library, human resource management, open resources, etc. Dr. Shaha is also as an editor or reviewer for the International Journal of Library and Information Science. Recognized for this, Outstanding contribution, he has been honored with numerous awards, including the Lifetime Achievement Award from IRDP Group of Journals, Chennai, the Universal Achievers Gold Medal Award from Universal Achievers Foundation, EAF, and the Indian India Gandhi Sabhanaba Gold Medal Award from Global Economic Progress and Research Association, GEPRA New Delhi. Additionally, he also dedicated his time to humanities causes and the honorary chairman of ABOSAR and NGO for the cause of humanity. And as a member of the Chhaka Kolkata Monetary Committee, his commitment showcased his multifaceted contribution to education and society. I am pleased to invite our new chairperson, Dr. Tapol Kumar Bharti. Please come on the dais and take your seat, sir. Dr. Tapol Kumar Bharti has been working as an assistant professor of the Department of Library Information Science, University of North Delhi. Since 2012, he is former head of Department of Library Information Science, member of the Coach and Executive Council, University of North Bengal. Prior to the present position, he was librarian in Banwari Lal Bodachia College, Asanto, Koshi Bordhuman District, West Bengal, and professional assistant in Central Library Vishwarthi Shantiketan, West Bengal. I am also pleased to invite our invited speaker, Professor Durga Shankarov, on the dais. So please come on the dais and be present. Professor Durga Shankarov is an distinguished academician holding the position of professor in the Department of Library and Information Science at Advita Chakra University. With a diverse academic background, he earned his PhD from Vita Sagar University, with an ADIS from the Indian Statistical Institute and income from Vita Sagar University. Prior to his current role, he served as a lecturer in the Department of Library and Information Science at Rabindranath University, Kolkata. Professor Roth's professional journal also included roles as an information officer at Satran Computer Service Limited, Hyderabad, and an assistant manager of information service at the Entrepreneurship Development Institute of India, Ahmedabad, a regional center of UNIG. His scholarly pursuits center around computer application in the library and information science, library classification, and the application of artificial intelligence in LIS field. Professor Roth has significantly contributed to the academic landscape with three published books and numerous articles in national and international journals. Now, I request our volunteers to felicitate Dr. Nimai Chad Shah.
to being a part of this illustrious illuminating personalities who have come from all over to India. It's truly a, an international seminar in collaboration with Bangladesh as well as our colleges. I am uh, trying to put a few words here. I found that two of my chairmen in this particular session, those both are from Vishwabharati. Right left side I find another colleague from Vishwabharati and the Professor Chatterjee's um, research student also from Vishwabharati background. It's uh, remind me one of the great occasions of Vishwabharati in the year 1988 when Desikattam was awarded to none other than Masanobu Kutkota. In this particular context, I would like to mention about Fukuoka, how he has changed the landscape of agricultural revolution, and that is also in a sustainable way. It's purely the natural way of agriculture, without spillage, that means without plowing, without applying any fertilizers, without pruning also, without any manures, any kind of herbicides, pesticides, it's simply understand the nature well, even the weeds which could go with that particular plant and escalate the production of that scenario. So before coming to the Green Revolution, what Saras tried to introduce you, I must say that this country especially is the country of the mind. Here is persons from Odisha, they could remember not only the 1866 famine of Odisha, where some of our West Bengal places also got suffered hugely. I learned from the later writings that uh, Vishnupur, one of the small town now and famous for its culture as well as some of the uh, what I say, uh, art, on art they have met really heaven. So anybody who has come from outside, they could visit it. It become the city of copper. That is what described during the origin of the mine. And we know that during that period, India had a larger GDP. And uh, I beg your pardon whenever I would say something, it's totally about our administration, our governance, nothing to do with any political party. So don't take it otherwise. Simply I would like to put some words, which not only for us, it's uh, even applicable to other countries also. World Trade Organization, they have taken charge of IPR, especially in the context of trade. Trade, at a time it was probably the mercantile, how to protect ourselves. Now IPR comes in that particular arena. We have to strike a balance in between to what extent we could protect our indigenous knowledge, our way of cultivation, the way which could sustain the fertility of the soil and the future progress also. So striking the right for making a balance in between protectionism as well as allowing the opportunity because even our copyright issues we know that JNU recently has opened the floodgate that for purpose of education, especially for the country like us, we must not uh, take care of that much uh, strict rules about the copyright issues and Indian Supreme Court has given the verdict very rightly in that direction. So keeping in that issues in mind, I have uh, tried to put some slides here. I also uh, say that even Samina Khan was passed away in the last September, who was the architect of uh, Indian, uh, I mean, the Green Revolution, one of the key figures all over the world, who is awarded Bharat Ratna recently. Yes, sir. Thank <laughs> you. 
first of all, this work trade organization, even education has become a commodity, not only the agricultural commodity, agricultural crops in our country, it uh, probably quite sufficient to uh, feed ourselves, to feed the belly of 80 crores. Government has already told that government ration system, they have incorporated 80 crores people in India. Then we cannot uh, claim that there is any poor in our country. All are well fed. But the, what is real scenario is, if you go to any uh, our uh, granaries, I mean wherever the food grains are uh, stored, you will find that in open space everything is kept and uh, rain, sun, everything, they are taking care of it naturally. What is the ultimate uh, goal of it? That ultimate goal, they will be procured by some of the liquor manufacturers. And the huge amount of crop, what we are building through our nation, they are never consumed properly by our country. That is the problem with World Trade Organization. They have asked not to provide means in some of the countries, those who are propagated, it's, uh, you know that this World Trade Organization, except United States, all of the 176 countries, they have agreed to this their proposal. But who have not agreed to that proposal, who have not considered environmental issues, that is only United States. I have uh, some of the other issues regarding that, but only problem that rights given to persons over the creations of their mind. Here also, I have a critical view. <laughs> this creation from the uh, intellect, what we call, this intellect, it sounds to me some sort of tact also. Is that what you said? For what reason I am telling it's tactfulness? If we remember our great Newton's words that whatever we have learned, as if you, you could see further because we are standing on the shoulder of the giant. So none could claim that he has originated something. It's a dynamic continuum. Whatever we have gained in this art, that is because our forefathers have already created something. Depending on that only we are doing. Then for what reason we need to protect it? On the other hand, the country like us, I have some uh, case studies about neem, about basmati rice, as well as about uh, turmeric also. These three, four cases I have uh, put you here. In those cases, when we are claiming that it's our knowledge and nobody should take patents over it, and uh, we are trying to put GI tax about several products all of our nation, and at the same time, to keep the momentum of the green revolution of our country, for our future uh, security, we have to take care of all these IPR issues and one of the very important issue and the organizers have uh, nicely selected the topic for this purpose. I, uh, this geographical industry, indication or industrial designs, trade secrets, all of the trade secrets, of course, whatever we know that we are consuming at a rate, any price tax you find, the costing of real costing of it is much lesser than that, much lower of it. So, why should we pay all these things? It's the beginning of it, the capitalism, emergence of capitalism in place of feudalism. It is true that it is capitalism that for, for that purpose only, we came to know about the different uh, intellectual rights, the creations, manufacturing more items, or even those who are not manufacturers also, they could, uh, I mean, through their uh, manual system also, they have created something more than the requirement of it, and profit, motive of it has generated out of it, and that is different, definitely, some betterment over feudalism uh, than the land-based uh, economic system that necessitated the rule-based protection of innovation, creative works, and commercial marks. 
used to trade and commerce. At that time itself, that is the emergence of capitalism. Then copyright and patent laws came up in uh, different parts of uh, Europe in the 15th and 18th century, starting with the Venetian patent statute of 19th March 1472, much earlier to our country. Even I would say that kind of thing in our country also it happens. If you go through the Mahabharata, there we find that these uh, two of the less illustrious Pandavas, like uh, uh, what I say, what are their names? Nampul and Sahadev. They were one of the different kinds of breeds of uh, uh, horses, different kinds of breeds of cows, and as well as bulls have been developed at that time. In our country, much later, after Hooks dispatch only, this Kusa and other institutes, they have started, started caring of these hybrid crops uh, and uh, seeds for all these purposes. But much before that, in Indian context, we could remember that in Mahabharata also, they have tried to develop some of the grids which could be for the betterment of our agriculture, uh, agriculture as well, as well as our uh, animal crops also. In England, the statute of Anne dated 10th April 1710 granted two publishers copyright protection. That is one of the very challenging issues what we are facing at the uh, budget constraint of all the libraries present day. We find all these copyright issues probably should be uh, reviewed properly in the present context and uh, open source movement and uh, open educational resources available uh, to some extent and we need to build some some sort of uh, crusade against, against this kinds of uh, protectionism on the copyright issues. <coughs> These are the things most of you have already uh, learned uh, in your academic courses. So I don't want to repeat all these things like Paris Convention and Berne uh, Convention, then the agreement of trade related aspects of intellectual property rights, trips, what is their dictum that has came into effect from 1st January 1995, where international legal multilateral agreement between all member nations of the World Trade Organization, and uh, that's why it's some sort of dictum for our country. It has a major role in enabling the trade in creativity and knowledge. And then, uh, the areas of intellectual property that covers are also copyright related rights. These are the common things. And uh, the areas of intellectual property that it covers are copyright and related rights. Then uh, geographical indications, more uh, applicable for our country. In Bangladesh, recently a case study has been, uh, as Bangladesh is uh, also co-organizer of this particular uh, international seminar, I remember that uh, the Sari, what we consider one of the most important uh, product of our bygone days. To prepare that one, even the cottons, they have uh, sewed in different parts wherever they could collect and a sari costing rupees 5 lakhs also, they tried to build it. They got and uh, the DNA culture from the British Museum itself they have started. So it took quite a long time, but honestly speaking, that sort of endeavor is missing in our country, I must uh, confess it. In our country, we are not taking that uh, seriously, what is our uh, really, our uh, past uh, was golden for what reason those seeds and uh, other um, diamond kinds of uh, uh, jewelries and all these things how to make it and how to uh, make it popular all over the world in present day the total jute industry got uh, totally eradicated from our particular state of West Bengal on the other hand we are, they are making different kinds of products out of jute 
even to uh, keep it in a bottle also i mean uh, different pairs uh, are there at present jute pairs are there where we find that different kinds of products are there but to make it economically viable for common people that is what the sustainability of the jute industry that's why jute producers though though they are really producing a lot of jutes nowadays also but they are used not in a very judicious way and the profitability of um, in all these things are much less than expected these are the biological diversity aspect of it i have uh, just tried to tell you that we have to keep the fertility of the soil as it is that is where the sustainability issues all the sdgs what is uh, prepared by our unesco all the 17 goals at least to past uh, 10 to 12 are more relevant for our countries and of this past six at least very much relevant and pertinent for this particular seminar and we must keep this ipr issue is related with it the objectives of cbd is to conservation of biological diversity sustainable use of the components of the biodiversity fair and equitable sharing of benefits arising from the generic genetic resources uh, one thing i mention here that uh, recently in uh, this part of bengal sundarban sundarban is also in bangladesh part they are biodiversity are getting reduced day by day the uh, truly uh, they are making money out of it definitely but uh, several unwanted constructions are there where uh, for lodging purpose for hotel purpose they are making it and uh, even after the verdict of the high court still the construction is going on and we must look into it that risk so what is the margin of profit of hotel industry tourism that is true that people have no other uh, alternative at this moment but still at the cost of the biodiversity we must not sacrifice and uh, economic aspects of it should be taken care of along with this uh, biodiversity issues fair and equitable sharing of benefits arising from the genetic resources this genetic resources is pusa even in british period they have now prepared so many seed varieties whereas at present i remember in our part of bengal we used to get at that time all kinds of the uh, crops especially rice those varieties are missing not at all available in the village areas they don't have uh, young generation they have not heard of the paddy varieties of that period these kinds of artisal or uh, what i say kalamba or uh, uh, nebu sal and all these uh, sals they have they have gone now after ir 36 onwards all this uh, the variety which may not survive in this soil for a long time uh, again we have to conduct the research but what was tested for a long time in a natural way that's why i used the uh, first natural crop system or natural agriculture what is propagated by masano fukuoka of japan he was awarded in 1988 itself the sigottam award by our mr bharati as well as maxasai award in the same year and yet some of the farms which are maintaining the same philosophy he is basically a philosopher he uh, in the same philosophy they showed that even after applying the latest varieties of fertilizer pesticides etc they cannot compete with the natural crops naturally bred where even weeding out is not allowed even pruning is not allowed no tillage is required no fertilizer is required for that for that crop so if that techniques are available why can't in our country even our cultivators they have al already uh, enough knowledge indigenous knowledge what we are telling at present even if we have not uh, ensured that even tkdl kind of great libraries have not been established still there are some practices and probably we need to rethink at the 
particular genera of IPR of this area. That to what extent this protection is useful for? And uh, traditional knowledge related to innovations, practices of indigenous and local communities around the world developed from local communities in the sense nowadays we are uh, global global for globalization issues. Most of the food habits, everything we are uh, inculcating from the media itself. That's why uh, just uh, recently I found that maiz uh, bhutta, that maiz cultivation in northern part of West Bengal has been increased like anything. Yes, I agree that it has also food value and all these things, but most of these times it is used for this fast food uh, manufacturers only. So they have uh, allowed the uh, people, probably they are. Uh, paying the money, they are uh, uh, purchasing it, crops, uh, all these crops, that uh, certainty is there for them. That's why the increase of this particular variety of mind has been increased in northern part of West Bengal. But I believe that what varieties are more, uh, even this, uh, uh, what I say, uh, tobacco or other uh, crops which were very famous in northern part of West Bengal, they have reduced like anything than earlier. It tends to be collectively owned and takes the form of stories. Yes, I agree that some of you might say that tobacco and all these things, not that way. All are nowadays uh, going to medical industry also and uh, uh, this uh, unwanted way of uh, exporting venoms from our country, they are also used for uh, medicine industry. In uh, That is also traditional medicine. Traditional medicine in China. It seems that crores of rupees are uh, going from our country, which are, we are not putting much value of them, but they are uh, used in their country, in through their traditional knowledge, they are making use of it. So these cultural values, local language, agricultural practices, this needs to be preserved for our future sustainability. And all these regions of protection is to equitable district considerations, considerations of conservation, preservation of traditional practices and culture, prevention of, and, uh, prevention of appropriation by unauthorized parties of components of traditional knowledge. Unauthorized in the sense those who are purely for profit motive, allowing us to cultivate a particular kind of crop, like uh, this indigo, nilchas of West Bengal, this, they have compelled us, whether we require it or not, they don't bother. That is, for their uh, economic aspects, they found that these kinds of crops can be developed in India and they cost us. But that should not be the way of developing agriculture, whatever economic aspects it has. These are the three issues, these plant varieties, inventions and copyrights, new plant products, cultivars and varieties of all the species of plants may be protected under plant breeders' rights. Plant breeders, uh, uh, again I will remember uh, Saminathan's uh, issue. Saminathan, when he has mentioned that uh, in our country, we have to develop some of the crop varieties, which are really require less water, maybe uh, according to the uh, requirement nowadays, of course, uh, we find the weather in Rajasthan also has changed a lot. Wherever <coughs> less uh, water earlier uh, required those kinds of things, now they are um, capable to uh, put more water. But some of the places like West Bengal, earlier watery lands were more. And that's why those wet lands were used for a particular variety of crops. During the rainy season, uh, the harvesting when they used to go, they used to go to boat and the boat they used to collect it. You see, those kinds of that crop variety in Bengal, we used to call them house. Those particular variety of crops is totally without away and now it is no more available in our part of country. Varieties developed by the uh, possessors of traditional knowledge could also be legally protected in this way. This traditional knowledge not only developing the seeds, even how to preserve all these crops, in what way they used to uh, hang it on the roof, in what way they used to store it at their home, 
those kinds of traditional knowledge are available in northeastern northeastern part of the india as well as our part also but we rarely put much emphasis on this issues only some of the herbal things we are uh, highlighting all of them and uh, probably we are thinking that that is the only golden past of india but it is nothing like that several other things are also there which needs to be protected geographical indications and uh, appellations of origin every time i find that uh, whether it is there are those they will put the tag over that or some other part of it together in our country uh, this rasgulla of west bengal they will put calcutta tag or some other tags so these are not much uh, difficult issue to resolve only thing is that this geographical indication should have that market marketability issue one uh, particular calico <coughs> brand of uh, this um, uh, garment that indicates that calico is a particular place of kerala and from there it has been developed the particular kind of cotton seeds probably now also not available there even egypt which is famous for all these aspects it's automatically known to all the people from where what is originated from the market uh, people but the geographical tags they are allowing it to to what extent they are authentic of that particular that authenticity unless it is established properly simply getting a geographical tag won't matter because you know that the geographical tag in present day they are telling that just simply you have to take the photograph of that particular uh, uh, what i say uh, latitude and longitude that mention should be there and that data once it is spread that means it is geographical tag is there so that product is related to that but uh, that is basically uh, what i say at any time we can deceive our consumers in that way so acknowledging the secret of traditional knowledge may be protected by means of unfair competition and law that is this unfairness of any productive practices has to be uh, uh, taken care of properly here some of the trade names goods manufacturers where we can uh, uh, pretend act can come into the rescue of it copyright act also judicial this should be used and uh, biological diversity should be made maintained properly different varieties and farmers rights also to be protected whenever uh, in especially in potato cultivation we find that some of the varieties we yet depend totally in west bengal we depend totally on uh, punjab varieties and uh, at this time every day the difference of prices in the morning if you find it is uh, 100 rupees a kilo the potato seeds evening you may find it is uh, 30 rupees or maybe 230 rupees this much uh, manipulation of it like our share market prices without uh, real reason just uh, by uh, some un unseen hands who are taking care of all these things they are the uh, real earners the middlemen who are earning their livelihood over it and not only livelihood actually they are exploiting our cultivators these are the case one turbine patent disputes 1995 united states awarded patent on turbine to university of mississippi medical center for wound healing property but do we know it even much before that most of our countrymen they know it they used to make use of this turbine for their own purpose the indian council of scientific and industrial research had objected to this patent granted to it probably some special Uh, things have uh, other aspects also anyhow all this uh, i am uh, really sorry i could not make a very uh, composed presentation before you probably i could uh, mention some of the issues which really can uh, be taken care of if a sustainable development not only the green revolution at a particular moment of time for the prosperity for the future growth of the globe itself not a particular country and uh, in true sense of this term then only we could claim the possibility to be born thank you all for your patience and listening
Thank you, sir, for your for a, such kinds of presentation and your profound wisdom. So it's a, it's a, I'm very lucky that uh, in between my in this class, so there are two stalwarts uh, in both sides. So that's why I'm just feeling comfortable. So that's why I know I need to uh, take extra effort to balance this because there are two, or two persons, knowledgeable persons, uh, they are playing between and also it's a very, very, very uh, comfort zone. I feel in such kinds of things. For this, that purpose, I also uh, express my gratitude to the organizers of the universal duty. So, uh, as uh, at the time, paucity of the time, so on the way, I, I just try to describe you only present for taking the session, you are also present. And another person, Dr. Obi, Rai, and Tulsi of Kip, only for the student present. So, without so much more time spending much more time, so I request Ibrahim, Ibrahim, I invite the different this presentation to I think will be enough. Okay? My name is Ibrahim, uh, Ibrahim Mollik, librarian, government general degree college at Animan. And my co author is Professor Sunil Kumar Chatterjee, sir, Department of Library and Information Science, Jadhpur University. Well, my topic is investigating uncharted server space with fake news, social media, algorithm, and intellectual property laws in the modern era. Well, the connection among intellectual property rights, social media algorithm, and fake news is actually represent a very complex landscape. News with algorithm sets user perception while intellectual property standards are crucial for upholding informs and validity. Challenges include the intricate dynamics of social media, attention craving, sensorialism, automated creation of false material, and concern about information behavior. These three are my objectives. First is identify the issue, the issue of dissemination false information over social media. Second is analyzing algorithm and intellectual property and related regulations. And third one is real cases and the strategies to overcome those cases. This the actually my topic is very much related to these three things, intellectual property rights, fake news and algorithm. So I give an definition. Intellectual property rights are the legal right to intellectual creation of mind like invention, artistic work, symbols, names, images, which establish minimum standard of protection. Whereas fake news is a misleading information which actually represent as being a genuine but is not is generally intended to generally intended to deceive people. And algorithm is a set of rules or instruction that actually 
manipulate or actually give those information over the user according to their use of news feed in social media. Now, fake news and news feed algorithm, how these are related? Actually, the bond between fake news and news feed algorithm is that the dynamic creates echo chamber whenever you actually see those videos which are actually manipulated or reading those articles which are actually somehow misleading. The algorithm actually will give those things again and again if you are actually watching those things and that will make an echo chamber of the user and will actually mislead you again and again if you are watching those video like that. And these are nothing but algorithm actually is good, but how it is become wrong whenever you actually watching those videos or reading those articles which are actually not real or misleading. The algorithm will think that you are actually just liking those ones and that will give you more related articles or videos over you. And that's why sometimes algorithm goes wrong. This is the relation of fake news algorithm and intellectual property rights. Actually, uh, sometimes what happens, whenever the fake news actually goes viral and you are watching those things, it actually sometimes violates the IPR. It may be one company, it may be a creation of any individual. Actually, it goes like that. Actually, I just uh, want to show their thing using this chat. How any fake news, whatever you are watching in social media, is actually violate the IPR. You see, uh, if your involvement in fake news on social media, if you got actually very much interested, then actually you will, it will decode such similar ideas in your other field. If no, you are not interested on in fake news, not interested in those misleading articles, then you will again you actually go to the news feed. And whenever you decode such similar ideas in your other field, then numerous involvement occurs. Your family also actually will involve this thing as you are watching those things. So this will also numerous involvement will occur and then fake news multiplies and gets stronger to get more number of audience. And that's how the IPR violated actually. If you are watching those things again and again and if you, those things are related to anyone creation, any company's intellectual things, then it will actually violate the IPR. Now, IPR in the era of social media, now we are not in now a very, we are in dynamic uh, change, that is the digital era, unlike the uh, traditional media, we are now everyone is a reporter on social media. So it is very, actually creates very complex matter on social media that you are actually sharing, creating many things and also violating the IPR of any person without your maybe without your knowledge or maybe uh, doing things intentionally. So these are the challenges on social media or rather in digital media. First is digital democratization that I was actually mentioned few time ago that is your traditional media unlike traditional media now actually everyone actually everything is both the dynamic environment that now digital things are actually made very complex to IPR. Now second one is copyright in the area of streaming platform. Previously, a couple of days ago actually I tried that one in Facebook that is if you search live matches, the test match yesterday is going on in India versus England. Now actually I saw that one that Facebook stopped this thing that is it is copyright infringement. But I have used that thing 
that if you search that one life, you can match India versus Australia, India versus England, like this. This will stream like cricket matches. So that will actually uh, creating very much dangerous thing for those uh, channels like Hotstar, maybe Geo Cinema, who actually bought this rights. So this right, this thing is very um, common. It is here used in the digital landscape. Well, there was a case in 2016 that Oxford University Press versus Rameshwari Portuguese Service within the digital in the Delhi University campus. The Oxford University says that you are actually copying my textbooks and distributed to students, which is actually violating my uh, copyright issue. But Delhi High Court actually made a judgment that distributing those knowledge by copying some text or actually build education purpose, it is not actually violating your cop or not actually copyright infringement, rather it is fair dealing or it is fair use. So it is very thin line. What is legal parity in user-generated content? Our IT Act 2000, it says that if third party is sharing any misleading information, then the intermediaries like Facebook, WhatsApp, YouTube is not actually responsible. The responsible will be the user who is sharing. Though actually in 2023, central government bought one bill that is the Digital Media Act. I hope this year that will be an act. So in that actually they change this thing and say you are not intermediaries, rather you are digital service provider. High risk proactive measure in dynamic digital area. Adapting to the dynamic digital area requires proactive measure, proactive evolving landscape of intellectual property rights. Stakeholder us in the digital space must strike a balance between innovation, content accessibility, and the protection of intellectual property. These are some examples. Actually, in film, what happened film actually on WhatsApp message was viral, was viral. And on that day, within one day, over 70% stack actually fall for the interview. And they actually got a huge loss. And this is also, I will mention the last one, that is the case. It was that case of Deep Tech. There was Rasmika Manda, uh, Bollywood actress. Or you can say Sachin Tendulkar also actually um, got this type of threat. That they change their face image using deep fake artificial intelligence and shared on social media by naming that it was such a telephone or it was the Sumiramanda. So, this is the threat. And I actually mentioned this three mainly in the dynamic media how this actually made a complex matter for the Copyright Act 1957, for Patent Act 1970 the trademark act of 1999 and how actually these things need some change because now digital media is very much active now we are the realm of big data so this thing must need some change these, these are the strategies that we must use cutting edge technology and then we must increase user knowledge to train them we work with social media platform to create algorithm and detect red flag that is now using X handle. <clears throat> to stop the spread of fake news, take legal action, rather strict action against those part, um, individuals, run campaigns to educate people, use artificial intelligence and machine learning to break down designs along for early detection, cultivate global collaboration for unified global approach. To adapt in the evolving sophisticated environment, stay proactive by regularly upgrading elements related to counterfeit news and license and innovation through the intended environment. This is our conclusion. This is my conclusion. It says that it is crucial that we remain proactive, foster intentional collaboration, and modify legislative frameworks as we traverse this rapidly evolving digital era in order to protect or intellectual property, foster innovation, guarantee moral technology uses and defend the right to free expression. Thank you. Thank you everyone. Thank you, Darren.
So question and answer will be after the presentation. Uh, now uh, the next presenter, Dr. Ravi Grant. I request Dr. Ravi Grant to present your paper. Well, um, a very good morning to all of you and to the dignitaries of the Times. I'm Dr. Tony Floyd, librarian, user of the College. I'm going to present a paper on the agricultural presentation as such. Whether I have taken the liberty of presenting the concept that I want to share with you all through a mind mapping approach. And that's why I have used one particular software. I have taken the liberty of a mind mapping application. We are talking about open society and to reach to the so called open society, we need to have. We need to trade the path of a very, not a long one, but a very organized one, I should say. And that will be started through the concept of totalitarianism. Now, what is totalitarianism? And why should we? In a totalitarian approach, we see two things very vital points. Reason. Knowledge becomes political. <laughs> critical thinking, because of this politicization of knowledge, <laughs> critical thinking becomes almost impossible. And the next one is destruction of knowledge creation chain. Those who are the supporters of uh, total determinism, as you see. The last one is destruction of knowledge creation chain. We try to destroy that. Why, why do we do that? Because they don't want a society to be open. I mean, not in terms of knowledge as such. Because our, an open society always fosters critical thinking and always expects the citizen to have critical thinking and to have a to achieve critical thinking kind of thing, we need to have knowledge. So if knowledge becomes, you know, in a box, uh, we, do not have, we do not have that, we could not achieve that open source. Now, basing on this array, we want to have our totalitarianism from totalitarianism, we need to go to the path of open society. And there is an approach 
that I want to have when present over here as a theoretical framework. And that theoretical framework is completely of mine and based on document analysis. The research concept has been based on document analysis. Basically, I have merged the social, sociological phenomena and theories and axioms with and philosophical core theories to reach to that open society. My approach is that if anyone, there are so many researchers out there, if they want to pursue the empirical researches or any kind of empiricism thing, they need to have this approach or they strive, they can try that approach with which we can achieve to the training of open society. I can say. Now, this is a theoretical framework that I want to propose over here. That is, first of all, I want to say about paradigms. What is paradigm? The paradigm is a construct, or I should say mental construct. We all have heard the term paradigm, but in sociological research, paradigm means it is our mental frame with which we see the world. You know? Each and every person has his own paradigm. So your paradigm actually is your world to you. What, how we see the world is reflected through your paradigms. We use in our researches, I mean the example is in which you know, we use our is in our researches as we take variables. You know? See, variables are measurable construct. You know what is construct? Construct we can say that weight. Weight is a construct, it's an abstract concept with which we want to pursue our research. But what weight or what measurement we can use, that is a variable. So construct is abstract one, variable is a concrete one of that measurable abstract. Paradigms is all the juxtaposition of the conglomeration of all these constructs and mental frames with which we see the world. The way we see the world is reflected through our view to the world. What I mean to say, if we say open society, I will utter some names of very popular names like Karl Popper and others, the very last portion of the presentation. But for the time being, let us assume that we are all belonging to a society that is called totalitarian society. Now, can we say that we are living in an open society? Let's explain this in this theoretical construct. Paradigms, there are, there, there, there are two sociological theories, very popular theories, modern and modern. They have presented two very important concepts called uh, sociological paradigms, actually, I should say. These are the ontology and epistemology. They have used these philosophical assumptions for their researches. Some other paradigms, just for naming, I, I, I want to add an over here, that is positivism, post-positivism, as you all have aware of that, empiricism, we can say that. Now, if we think these two ontology, like two paradigms, that is ontology and epistemology, these are very much constructed to explain the world that we view in our eyes. Now, there are innumerable paradigms. I have taken for this study only four one. One is functionalism, you know. Ontology is how we shape the world. Ontology is as Barrel and Morgan has proposed in 1979. How we see the world and epistemology is how we study the world in an objective way, that is epistemology. So if we start our research with the belief that we are ontologists, then we will see that the world is in order. The world is composed of different parts and it forms one order as Berger and Lachman has proposed in their sociological construction of reality. Now, if we see that the world is order and 
we need to do something that will remain this order in a particular way. We are approaching the ontological paradigm that is called functionality. Next, if we see that all is composed of orders, and we, if we want to see that in a subjective way, that will lead us to the interpretivism. If we see that the world is of, you know, there is a radical change, I mean, the world is dynamic, there is a change, and that's why we need that approach which may sustain us to remain that change in an objective way. That means we are approaching the world in a construction or in a construct or paradigm that is called radical structuralism. We, if we see the world as a very social order or a, a very changeable social order which remains always changed and we see that the subjective approach would be the best way to read or to study that order, we are approaching the world in a radical humanity. Now, these are the paradigms with which all of us are oriented. You know, maybe we are not using that in that way. My purpose of this presentation is that if we are going to pursue any research, say for example, research about open society through empirical data, but we do not see that we, what kind of approach do we need to put over there? What kind of paradigm do we need? We just take variables. Would that be dependable or independable or any kind of theoretical construct we take. But before having any construct, we need to have certain paradigm and then we go for data collection. That means our research will be much more organized. So if we think that we're going to have a research on, or if we're going to lead to a point that will land us to the open society, we need to have a paradigm. What? We need to know that what paradigm we are having. But the fact is, there is a relationship that is open society, which has been the term has been coined by, in 1932 by uh, Henry Bergson and he has actually equated with moral universalism. I won't go to the moral universalism in the giant area. Now, what would be the relationship of open society? You know? The thing that I was discussing over here has a very good relationship with open society, relationship and community. But the fact thing is, in an open society, each citizen needs to engage in critical thinking which requires freedom of thought and expression in the culture and legal institution that can facilitate this sorrows and joy to come and see age of vulnerability public advocacy has been uttered. Now, if we say that we are living in an open society, what would be the characteristics of an open society? There should have been cultural and religious pluralism open to improvement because knowledge is dynamic and ongoing. <laughs> Karl Popper did not identify the open society either with democracy or legislative. Karl Popper, in a, uh, during uh, uh, World War II, has again promulgated the term open society and his view was that it is not about openness or we are democratic like this. His thought is that very last line is very important. Critical frame of mind on the part of the individual. It is open society. So the thing that I propose over here that suppose you are in a totalitarian country. Do you agree with that? That is your paradigm. What do you think that whether you are totalitarian countries or open society? It's your viewpoint that what society we are living. So if we approach that open society in our own construct, that is open society. Yes. This is a theoretical framework and I have designed this, it is completely of mine, I have designed it in pain, it is not taken from anyone else. I humbly encourage all the researchers or my students over here and if all the interested persons to pursue any empirical research and if I will also do that towards open society. Now, the fact is, 
whether when you are going to pursue that empirical research, you should have data. Yeah? What data you need, that would be dependent on your paradigm. So that's why I frame this thing. Uh, if you are pursuing uh, before the research before then me, then you can uh, share the uh, concept with me. I'm available at That is my case handle. Who is going? You can just tag me with your data, whatever empirical findings you have. That is my email ID. And then, thank you very much. Elaborated by the scholars with their uh, very efficient presentation. 
and I found three types in this session. Tripar has been presented, Tripar has been not presented, and one candidate presented but not presented this session to help us, to help me, because he has presented his paper yesterday. So three times. One absent, one present, one present, but presented yesterday, not present this time. So this is. And one more curious thing to me, also jokes to you, that I don't know why you be means universal meeting and learn project. Is it any mnemonic device by applying library science? Why the name of the platform is universal meeting and why the backbone, the backbone of the, the universal meeting is by made up by UB. So I am very thankful whomsoever made up the name, but this is the again application of real library science knowledge. So thank you very much and offering us a scope to be here in this session uh, as a chairperson, co-chairperson and invited speaker from all three of us who would like to express our deep sense of gratitude with the organizer for allowing us to be here to uh, conduct the session. Thank you very much. Now this is a time for discussion. Uh, I am requesting Well, uh, thank you for the invite and being organizing secretary of this seminar. I just, uh, you know, it's my contribution to the universal food, my favorite. I'm giving it to you also. <laughs> no, Thank you, Honorable Chairperson, Co Chairperson, and Invited Speaker. We are very much engaged by this session. Now, the technical session, why will be continued by Twitter Emotion? <laughs>
Now, technical session 5 is going to start. The theme of the technical session is IPR and social media. I would like to invite Professor Shubhano Kumar Dash, chairperson of this technical session, to come on the dais and to proceed. Dr. Shubhano Kumar Dash is Professor of Jadapur University. He has done his PhD degree and immunization from Jampur University and MA from University of Calcutta. His areas of expertise include knowledge organization, metadata, digital resource and description, information and knowledge management, and he has made numerous noteworthy contributions to the field of library and information science. He has numerous publications and he has over many prizes. Now, I would like to invite Dr. Shivshama Jana, co chairperson of this session, to come on the dais and have his note. Dr. Shivshama Jana is an assistant professor in the Department of Library and Information Science at the University of Kolyani. Here, he is Emergency from Jadupur University, receiving the Extreme Gold Medal for ranking first in the class. His academic journey continued with a postgraduate diploma in digital library management. Dr. Chana's academic pursuit extends beyond library. His academic journey continued with a postgraduate diploma in digital library management. Dr. Chana's academic Pathways extend beyond library science as evidenced by his MSc in geology from Presidency College. Further enriching his knowledge, he obtained a diploma in personal management, industry relations, and labor welfare from SLI West Bengal Government. He completed his PhD degree from Jampur University in 2012. Dr. Chana has numerous publications. He serves as a valued member of the editorial board and regular panel for the Indian Journal of Library and Information Science. Dr. Shipshankar Chana is also a live member of prominent organizations such as BLA, ILA, and ESP. Dr. Chana is now a professor and head of the uh, Department of Library and Information Science, University of Kolkata. I would like to invite Professor C. A. Sivar Singh as an invited speaker to come on the dais and please take your seat. Dr. Sivar Singh is a professor of Monipur University. His academic achievements include BSc honors in statistics, BLIC with gold medal from Monipur University, MLIC second position from Northeastern University Shilam in 1993, and a PhD from Monipur University in 1999. His areas of expertise include information systems, bibliometrics, information and communication technology organizations of knowledge and its application and science. And he has numerous publications in this field and valuable contributions also in this field. I request volunteers to felicitate Professor Shubhano Kumanda. <coughs> Thank you. 
I request volunteers to felicitate Professor Shiv Shankar Jana. Thank you so much, sir. Very <coughs> good morning, one and all present. In this uh, technical session of the Mumbai International Seminar on IPR. I am very much grateful to Professor Dai who invited me to be a part of this wonderful program. We are in the University of Fantastic. 
I have a very limited knowledge on idea and uh, social media on which I am going to share with you some slides. Since yesterday, right from the very beginning of the inaugural session of this general conference, many experts have spoken about intellectual property rights, many issues associated with that, and even some of the invited speakers as well as the presenters have covered certain aspects on social media and how social media influences the intellectual property rights. So mine will be very, very limited one within a span of 25 to 30 minutes. I will try to share with you some of slides, which I prepared long time back for <coughs> slides PPT and uh, I just supplemented a few things recently. The topic given to me by the organizing team is uh, intellectual property rights and the social media. So let me begin with this small background. Sometimes <coughs> many literature have covered and explored on intellectual property, intellectual property rights, and social media as well. Based on those published literature, and based on my understanding about idea and social media, I'm just making these slides. So the one intellectual properties for the IP is not a new one. It has been known as cradle in the United States, not Italy. Long time ago, in 1474, the Venetian law has made all systematic effort to protect its unfair exclusive right over the first person. This is as for their particular law. As we understand, IP refers to human intellectual creations and new ideas in both artistic and commercial domains, for which the investors are granted exclusive rights, which is known to all of us. Let me just quote what Mipo states about IPR and IP. According to this global organization, IP refers to creations of the mind. The creations of the mind is very, very important. It is product out of creation of our thinking, our intellect, and our mindset. So it includes inventions, literary and artistic works, symbols, names, images, and designs using commerce, and many other aspects. We have been talking since yesterday. So ideas <coughs> are protected for very periods of time, depending on their nature and jurisdiction. It has also been covered. So, such rights seek a balance between preserving the rights of creators at one side and owners and allowing others on the other side to use and build upon those works. These are very important parameters associated with IPR. In fact, IPR and social media have become increasingly very, very important today when we talk about open era, open society. We have been witnessing a lot of changes in the society, right from the very beginning of the Iranian society till this ICT driven modern society, we have been witnessing a lot of changes and today we are doing much talking about web era, open era, open society and many other Things. The protection of idea presents a number of challenges with particular reference to this digital age, which is highly driven by information and communication technology. With the advent of social media, again, IP came under various threats. 
I am going to focus on that. Copyright infringement, trademark infringement, and tax sector trade are a few of these concerns. We are really speaking about this since yesterday. So my presentation, my simple presentation will focus on the challenges of IP protection in the hands to social media. At the same time, we also will discuss about strategies to protect idea. My friend Amit also will speak and he will, I, I hope he will explore more. <coughs> So, uh, recently we uh, analyzed the publications related to intellectual property right on many dimensions. Here's the next by Web of Science. In the Web of Science World Database Collection, during the period 1989 to 2023, a total of 7,269 articles were put forward. We have been extracted from the Web of Science for the garbage collection, and uh, these articles around 7,000 to uh, 300 studies we have conducted during this particular period. And those articles were related to IPR and its related aspects. This is uh, global coverage, and uh, we have a number of different types of documents. All together we have 20 documents, so it gives us understanding that intellectual property right is one of the important areas of research, not only in the field of say commerce, not only in the field of say science, uh, in the field of library and information science, many other fields of studies also used to carry out studies related to idea. So these are some of the <coughs> documents available during the period that in uh, 1989 to 2020. And recently in 2021, they were related to IPR, the Raju Sabha, Indian Raju Sabha has published one very useful report. According to this report, this is uh, on 161st report review of the intellectual property rights region in India. This report has observed and analyzed the overall scenario of idea region in India and its contribution to promoting innovation and entrepreneurship in the country. This report, you can go through this report, and this report also examines the challenges in strengthening the idea region. The related procedural and substantial substantive constraints, different legal aspects, and other issues such as low awareness of idea. The most important problem that we are facing about idea today is its awareness. In the country, a number of awareness <coughs> programs are being conducted, and counterfeiting and uh, piracy. And IP financing, IPRs in agriculture and uh, the pharmaceutical sector, etc. And this report covers many issues associated with IPR. So let me just uh, highlight once again what actually IPR is, as uh, expressed by some of our invited speakers and the other presenters. IPR are regarded as a lawful entitlement. Granted to the product producers for their innovative projects, for works, for inventions. This may include many things are there than the idea, literary, artistic works, new design designs, new innovative ideas, in addition to symbols, images, names, designs used for commercial purposes, and the like. There are many things. Creators and owners of these works often use IPRs to protect their rights from unauthorized use of infringement. Usually, the mind created works are protected by legal rights. As we discussed since yesterday, IPRs are IPR created by our mind. The creators of intellectual works 
are protected by his rights. From having their ideas stolen or misused without their consent. However, with the, with the advent of the social media, a serious threat has been observed in protecting what our mind created things produced by individuals and different organizations of institutions. As us, as taken up by the Universal briefing. We are also we are facing a lot of discussions related to idea, and uh, so idea has become nowadays an important matter of discussion in many forums. We are also having now idea and social media. So social media refers to the online streets of individuals and the exchange of user-generated content. This is quite uh, familiar to all of us. Let me just highlight what actually can be in this discussion discuss about <coughs> social media. It is a website and cultural program that allow people to communicate and share information from the internet using a computer or mobile. It is as per definition given by Henry Space Dictionary. Now the big questions before us include, is the content and information shared on social media protected? This is one of the big questions for all of us. Another question is, is there theft on social media? These are the key issues on which we are going to be talking about idea as well as social media. In fact, social media becomes a vital part of our life and at the same time, it also calls for inherent problems like theft of intellectual property. Social media again becomes the battlefield for the business owners. With some of the gray areas of IP and IT related laws, now it is necessary for the business owners and others to restrict themselves by not sharing available contents on social media. We have to be very, very careful about this. Not the evolution of social media was to help in many ways, but at the same time, it also shows a whole new set of challenges in the intellectual process. The phenomenon is actually global. Over sharing in open society, it is happening nowadays. The emergence of social media has made it very easy and handy to share everything in social media, right from pictures to ideas, from videos to states, from small texts to long, long stories. Maybe books, maybe voluminous books. So everything can be shared on social media, which become a new trend today. This is because social media provides the wide open platform to showcase the works or creations of individuals or institutions. X, formerly Twitter, Facebook, YouTube, Instagram, WhatsApp, etc., are important social media tools being widely used in this open society. But without even giving a second thought, multiple pictures, videos, broadcasts, Several Instagram stories nowadays are found to post daily. Within few seconds, we can get a lot of information to different social media platforms. With just a click, we share our pictures and videos and other original content in the whole worldwide. It is the possibility of the use of social media. Social media is everyone's favorite platform to share one second placement, teller and teller, and success, political opinion, or any other feelings, etc. So, infringement, this is very important again, walking down others' content and posting their by their own name on social media is become a normal practice today. There are prop users who use the name of brands and 
Yeah, for those in this way, yes, they are born to buy customers. We have been practicing. It is, this is in Queensland property and property right. I feel in Queensland, through so social media and form, copyright piracy, like pirating movies and songs, making cat cakes or Facebook accounts or cameras personality things, etc. Now there comes the questions about the role and the reality of intermediaries. As a social research engine, where a social uh, service providers, etc. Because these intermediaries play a very much important change in role in this transfer. Intermediary has defined under section 2 close double of information that Google has to on to is any person who on their own others with respect to any particular network message and means any person who on behalf of another person receives, stores or transmits that message or provides any service in respect to that particular message. This is this has to protect from this particular gate. It is mentioned very much clearly under this section 2 post document. As it is in the hands of those intermediaries to keep or not to keep this intelligent contained and to sell the password of the social media accounts. In 2020, we have seen Utah now as accounts of famous persons get back to them that through we heard about Joe Biden, Elon Musk, Bill Clinton, and Jeff Bezos also. Here we are incidents. This has been considered as the government of the hands of intermediaries or service providers because they are the ones who sell passwords. We have to think about these things also. According to intermediaries, uh, its definition, even about social media, such as cash, YouTube, Facebook, Instagram, MySpace, etc., also come from the different intermediaries. Now, let us see the policies of some of the social media. So, enforcement of idea by social media. Social media also in many ways enforce the protection of IP again. Social media protect the enforcement of IP in several ways, such as criticizing, by criticizing, take down policies of social media houses. When someone creates something and posts it on social media, millions of people see it and uh, millions of people see it and uh, <clears throat> at the same time, when someone copies that thing, it is also visible to millions of people. And uh, they start criticizing the others and give recognition to the political education. It is happening nowadays. There are examples that prove that before the social media, the original content created was recognition and their rights. Then we take up some incidents collected from some political problems and areas. In 2017, the World Paper Singer then was in both a piece of New York and Obama Festival, which raised is widely racist, sexist, homophobic, or transphobic, when you could be just gay, which went viral and it raised that the manufacturer bought. 5,500 order overnight, but later we turned out the quotation on the, on the start originated from the tweets sent out in other schools in Britain by Brandon Mali, the 18 year student of Lord Serenity's New York. This happening, it was happened most. So, generally, they also protect the counterfeit goods as this also comes under the ambit of IPR. As we know, there is increase in innovation and waste in the and expansion of counterfeiting goods. These counterfeiting goods may also pose physical illness in one sense, injury or even that. It is happening. 
counterfeit goods are basically the replica of the real product, and uh, it is done to enhance the quality of one use, as well as to lose goodwill of the real product. According to a global brand <coughs> counterfeiting report, hotel counterfeiting activity for 2017 amounts to 1.2 billion US dollar and this 1.8 to billion US dollar in the year 2018. So this is the scenario. Now let me just highlight some of the challenges that we are facing about idea in this uh, particular case of uh, social media. The difficulty in enforcing rights is <coughs> Social media platform which have huge amounts of user generated content can make it difficult for rights and others to monitor and enforce their rights. It is a very big issue. But user generated content. User generated content is often a major component of social media platforms, making it difficult for internet platform holders to control how their work is used, distributed and disseminated. Copyright infringement when was talking about the use of social media again can result in copyright infringement as user based uh, copyrighted content without permission. Trademark infringement is also another important aspect. Social media platforms at the same time can serve as Breaking grounds for trademark infringement because users are free to use their mark without permission. So, jurisdictional challenges, this is also facing the whole world, the worldwide nature of social media platforms makes it challenging to implement, since uh, and execute intellectual property rules in various countries. And we have also about fair use. The idea of the use is often used in the context of visualizing copyrighted works on social media. I will go over about the uh, scholarly communication articles and all about the articles talking about plagiarism and its related issues. Even in literary works, there are also many issues associated with that. UGC has come up with its uh, beautiful standard of the year, I think that was in 2018, about the uh, similarity level. This report has not been communicated to understand. Up to 10 percent similarity, the additional penalty, more than the additional penalty will be imposed by the IAM over the world. And this is not about technology, it is about the integration. So, there are some strategies. With this, we can protect intellectual property right. Uh, these are commonly agreed some of the strategies that have been adopted worldwide. So, copyright registration we should do. Registering one's own work to the object of which is legal or commercial. Otherwise, not. The digital rights management, we are talking about digital rights management during this open era, the use of digital rights management technologies also can help control how digital content like videos, music and other things is access distributed and disseminated. Licensing agreement we heard from the data also yesterday, owners can have more control over how their work is used as well as the ability to monetize it Provide licenses to others. They are not maybe used to protect brand names and logos, but it is similar to more of rights of creators and prevent others from using them without permission. Then, second is another one. It is also possible to employ that seconds to separate private corporate informations like receiving customer ideas, etc. Water marking. Encryption and other forms of digital signatures may physically be used to trace the content back to this original data. Nowadays, this is being practiced. Uh, these are some of the uh, yesterday I missed 
Don't post me to the young from my life has been so many associated with the Lord and the man about my care in India is related to some relations and all. I miss the opportunity to be next in the generation. But for India, as uh, we understood and we all have agreed, there are certain areas on which we can focus to make public aware about the relations of the human rights. These are some of the general agreed. For them. So, under education and training, uh, we can provide, uh, say, our people, companies, and organizations with the knowledge and training they need to know about the significance of resulting development of the rights. The role of National IPR 2016, National IPR can create awareness by launching seminars, workshops in schools, colleges, and universities about. IPR in India. Nipam in India is also conducting a number of relation awareness, relation property awareness. I have also conducted two webinars under Nipam and the uh, number of participants were more than 2,000. It was uh, very good uh, to make the public, particularly academicians, scholars, and students aware of. And uh, such type of workshops and other can be conducted in schools, colleges, and universities mostly. At the same time, we have also to launch some awareness campaigns to promote the use of intellectual property in the right way. And we can have collaboration with the stakeholders so that we can be promoted for the use of IPR and things. Leveraging social media and other different platforms is also necessary to spread information and bringing public awareness to the development of the rights. And we need to participate actively, sincerely, in international IP brands at the same time. And we also should increase innovation. Uh, let me just uh, highlight you. What is actually happening in the We have a patent information center when uh, someone uh, invented or discovered some new thing, it is uh, being registered to get the patent number. It, is, uh, it was established well in 1998 in Mars, right? Today, from science and technology and technology in Malaysia. And there are some interesting uh, patent uh, treaties uh, in some upper command and company study, there is convention, okay, industrial property, patent of uh, cooperation treaty of 1970, and the And these are some of the, I'm very much uh, interested to highlight this thing. These are some of the patented GI tech. Uh, Products from Niku. This is called Sakhi Lanki, mostly used during the time of the war. GI number given is 731. It is popular among the different uh, three communities on Niku. We have also Wabriki, very, uh, this one, Wabriki, very uh, important customary item, no? used mostly within. within Within this season, it has got CI number. So, I'm getting this number, C7. And what happened is also there. As I did on the official district, it has got this pattern number. Then, somehow, it's very wonderful guys. Somehow, from Manipo. Then, a great city of Manipo, in the different district. One important village is here producing silly. These things work the GI numbers. I'm just highlighting how patents and patent information center pick up this initiative so that uh, people are aware. What is he used to use one Ramsa? No? People used to call it Modi Ramsa. Yes, sir. It is not body house actually, we call it Bayun Team. It is a real product from Manipur and some agents that UP has started producing 
number quite a large number of body comes up. Now it has been uh, circulated with media, it is body comes up, but actually it is from body comes up. It is from Manipur, it is Lenin, you used to make this thing. The people from Manipur are trying to get its uh, GI number. But these are some of the agreements that we have to invest in. So if we do all these things, then uh, we can uh, comfortably put it on intellectual property. These are some of the intellectual property rights related news and legislation. These are some half of some I had spoken yesterday. The moment we will it again. So these are pretty much challenging issues between all of us. A lot of we have between enforcement issues, emerging technologies. Including this one, virus and something, taxes and affordability, and we can come and next to all the legal perspectives from India, a lot of complexities. These are the future trains from idea to the speakers from the United States. Yesterday, after lunch, I was visiting some of the places. And these things, idea and digital work issues are very, very important. In the digital world, IPR is disrupting multimedia. media. Multimedia elements can be found in different web pages, in the various browsers that support multimedia formats. Different multimedia work elements can be protected as security work, artistic work, sound, and digital work. So, multimedia, uh, digital media have allowed users to access various copyrighted contains and this opportunity. We have this is a very serious issue. As a digital rights investment, it has been used to be used to democratize access to the information in the digital environment. So, friends, these are some of the things that I would like to share with you this evening. Thank you so much for thank you, Mr. Singh, for your excellent presentation. Now I request uh, uh, Dr. Jana, please follow the name for the presenter. Nice pleasure, Mr. Sir. Thank you. Uh, you have highlighted uh, many things. Mainly, you have downloaded different types of the documents on IPR published in Bible Science. Then you also arranged some over sharing of IPR or copyrighted. Uh, object to social media and IPR improvement to the social media and also there is some issues uh, about the uh, hacking of social media account and also you mentioned some enrollment and improvement of the IPR in social media issue. Now we are getting late by 30 minutes. <laughs> we have one, two, three, four, five papers but Four papers are, you know, side out. Only one paper is there, I think. Uh, Superna Nostal, are you present? Oh, Tapun. Okay, okay. So your paper is awareness of copyright infringement among the undergraduate students in the age of social media and exploited studies. Upon our will present. The paper is written by Dr. Suparna Nostor, Librarian, Kandi Raj College, Kandi Boshitawa, West Bengal, and Dr. Tapan Barwi, Assistant Professor and also head the Department of Library and Information Science, University of North Bengal.
Onorna Khos. Are you present? Onorna Khos and Madhuri Rani Pijuli. Sir, they have already presented yesterday. Okay, okay, okay. Good morning again. Now I am here to present another paper. And first of all, I would like to make a chairperson, Professor Subhadrat Bandas, and co-chairperson, Professor Subhadrat Bandas, and the United Speaker, Mr. Singh. <coughs> this paper uh, is almost a repeat on that Professor Singh has already exposed lots of good as the topic is like we are so many so many scholars, so many scholars uh, uh, and and other things that have related. Here, here uh, I want to explore uh, some empirical data, uh, but uh, before presenting this paper, uh, I also like to express my shortcomings because before we come to the into the paucity of time. Uh, we have covered very, very little something, uh, that there is a companion something technical views. Only two colleges, one college is Kanada uh, Labs College, that uh, my co author is working, and another college is the Kanada Labs College, that I am near Mahmoudra Airport, which is under the University of Mahmoudra. So, two colleges from one from the uh, University of Kulani. Sandhya's College and another uh, college uh, for the University of North Bengal, which is the Ajmer of the Sporai And uh, in this, uh, this actually, uh, we want to, we want to, to see that one in very very popular increase. How the undergraduate students are aware about this particular thing. Are the really, really they are aware about this topic or they are doing as and when required? So, but the, from this query, we are trying to make this paper and uh, trying to gather in the data to Google Form using social media, you know, WhatsApp group, students' WhatsApp group. And within very limited time, within three days, we have collected only 87. Only 87 but respondents, and within this short sample, have tried to draw some pattern. You know, the social science research is trying to draw a pattern how the students are aware about the idea of being the popular generation. So, uh, try to uh, explore what is the reason is actually get my enlightenment in this kind of scenario or to do all the scenario. So here, I am not going to the introduction part, uh, some objective. Here the objective, mainly the, uh, uh, what, uh, uh, what is the level of awareness about the copyright infringement and uh, in what way the copyright, copy laws being infringed by the undergraduate student and uh, what is the factors, factors to infringement of the copyright law and for what is the various way through which copyright law infringement can be reduced uh, to uh, among the uh, undergraduate students? So, keeping in mind, we are trying to gather, uh, we are trying to, we are trying to have a frame a questionnaire to Google Forms and collect the data and try to represent the type of the psychological uh, 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 Here, uh, we found that in this two college, 31, 31 students uh, responded in PRC, that means Sandhya College, and 46 students are uh, responded in the Adipada Bush or I am not in the case in Kelly. So I am in thing, uh, and we found that most of the, most of the uh, students are art background, uh, and if they are uh, studying undergraduate in the and almost 50% male and 50% Latin, almost slightly male students have uh, responded much more, but almost 50% male and 50% female students have responded in social science, 
And uh, we have also found that there are some people, 50, 50 respondents and 57.2 percent of the respondents stated that they do not uh, put out the false citation. Uh, so we have uh, from from the license we are very much aware, very much aware about that the citation, false citation. Intentionally, we you know, sometimes people also put their citation, but the false citation. So most of the people, almost uh, half of the uh, respondents, they have no idea about what is the false false uh, citation. That's kind of kind of fun. And what is the another section also covers some questions regarding what are the factors of copyright infringement according to the undergraduate uh, student. Here we found that the uh, 46 percent, that is 52.8 seven, include the high cost of textbook uh, and make them infringe or the uh, uh, kind of the copyright law. And 11.9 percent were undetected. And then they are also discussed about regarding the high cost of the things. So, this is the risk kind of fact also found. And, uh, and what is the their perception of the meaning of this copyright infringement? What is their assumption? Just to be able to be the right size. 50% are strongly agree that students should be aware about the copyright law. And uh, they participate in the the involvement of copyright infringement should be to define that there are some 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 kinds of fine uh, case money or something should be given for that but something punishment should be given here. There, there are these kinds of facts also found there. So here we found that the uh, most of the people, most of the uh, uh, undergraduate students, mainly the art students. They are, they are uh, not aware so much, they, they keep aware about the copyright infringement. So, for that purpose, uh, as our observation to this small subject, the copyright law and copyright related material, IP and copyright material, should be implemented in our course curriculum, uh, if possible, in the, uh, in the college level, and uh, if possible, as a paper. Should be included for that purpose. The students should be aware, and then in the future, when they will be able to be engaged in research and other activities, so they will be able to focus on this. Thank you, thank you very much. Thank you, thank you, Dr. Varun, for your uh, nice presentation. Now the session is open for all. Any question or clarification or suggestion, please? Any all question? Okay, thank you. Now I request uh, Professor Das to conclude the session. Uh, very nice presentation in this session. Uh, first of all, I uh, again congratulate uh, Dr. Singh uh, for his very excellent presentation. And one thing he has raised that is user generated. And information in the social side. That is very, very, I think, vital and present. But I suggest you, sir, IP Act 2000, that have been amended in 2008, Chapter 11 of IP Act deals on cyber crime. And if any things are posted in the social media, then violation of the cyber crime, 67 of IP Act, and that can be incorporated. Second thing is that. Nobody bothers in copyright because the code is failure. Because some political party they have already stolen this slogan, and that case was going on before the Supreme Court. Still now, do not. Yeah, this is our caption. This is our uh, invention. But code is failure, and I think very weaker Indian copyright act. But this is my perception. The copyright act still now is very weaker. It must be amended. They have should have the very strong provisions. How we, it must be the action oriented, and then it will be better for us. And the vendors of the licensing part is that also was seen pointed out. That is also very vulnerable. The vendors are not bothering anything sales. Their documents when they are selling, 
to e-books. Uh, in the e-book forms, they are not bothering, they are selling. I think no app cannot put it. So, thank you all. Again, I congratulate to the organizer, special, especially the Universal Reading uh, President, Professor Udhar Bhattacharjo, and, and his team, organizing secretary, Ranjan Samanto, Ovik Roy, Samun Khan, Kunomi Bodel. Aro, there are so many. Uh, Member of this team, our respected teacher is here, Professor Sumil Kumar Chaitanya from my, from my department. I again, I am very happy in the presence of my teacher. I am chairing the session. So again, I uh, to all of you, I comment this section. It is to be clear and Govind is here, Pranamandal Singh from the Tamil Nadu University, Amit Kumar, Rajesh Ji, Mahapatra Sir, Mukeshankar Rao, Tapan Madhu. All of you. Again, I congratulate you. Say some thanks to Professor Ugan Dr. Chadjo for his very well organized uh, seminar. This is the second time. And I am honored and I am happy to be a part of this technical session for the two times. Again, I congratulate for myself to Professor Ugan Dr. Chadjo and the of PP and also the Little Geo College. Thank you. Thank you, sir, for nicely conducting this session. Now, this is the time to give our beloved presenter the farewell. We are requesting our honorable chairperson to present presenter to the presenter. So, I am calling up the name. Dr. Topol Babu, please come. Thank you, sir. The next session will be carried out. See the button.
说大点。Dear professional friends, I'm so very important to one another. So first of all, I thank uh, to Professor Dean Matajaria sir for inviting me as a another resource person for this international seminar. Actually, once I received the invitation from uh, Professor Udayan, I admire how he coined this uh, topic of this uh, international seminar. Uh, he uh, actually he coined about IPR as well as the conundrum of this information manager and creating a open access society. Really, actually, during my academic career, I organized more than 15 conferences. Even though I admire how he coined a wonderful topic of this kind, Sandy. So, second thing, uh, so the topic is aside for me, uh, practical aspects of. <coughs> Practical aspects of IPR and including case studies and legal proceedings. Actually, why this assignment? I go from first technical session onwards to the last technical session. All our professors they delivered here in my data. But I am the practicing librarian, so I got this topic as practical aspects of IPR. So thank you very much, sir, for assigning this title to for me. So coming to the part of so intellectual property rights, you have uh, from yesterday university got discussing more what the, what is the meaning, so what is the uh, role of IP or everything. So just uh is no need of any further explanation, you don't know one by one. So actually IPR is it refers to the creation of mind that is maybe the invention, maybe the industrial design or maybe the logical or any kind of different works. It definitely to be uh, that has a commercial impact. So viability and importance. It improves a wide range of legal aspects and moral rights to the creators or inventors. So what is intellectual property rights? You know very well it is the intangible items. It is a legally it is a protected with your owners, inventors, or creators. It is purely an immaterial. There is no doubt. At the same time, what is intellectual property? It is the com uh, combination of intellectual component as well as the physical component. Intellectual component means you know very well, it is intangible item or creative any kind of image or any kind of events. But the physical component is concentrated in some kind of art of what is uh, the physical medium. That is not of the both comes under the intellectual property. Uh, I mean uh, product. So why do we need to protect that intellectual properties? So if you want to keep your company value, if you want to keep your uh, working or any assignment, so you need to keep intellectual property. So if you uh, help to entry any barriers to the particular creation or particular ideas, particular uh, image that works out, so definitely will give their legal monopoly to the ones or creators. And also it avoid free writing. It avoids uh, help to improvement and financial leveraging also. Definitely, once you will have the uh, idea, you will have a good way, you will uh, keep for your commercial purpose, for your own or any kind of intangible. So, comes to the part of there are two categories in the intellectual property rights one is industrial property, and another one is property. So, you know very well, it consists of relating to any inventions or any kind of trademark or design or logos or that may be uh, geographic indications comes under industrial property. And copyright, you know very well what the conditions, what is copyright. Okay. So any kind of literature, any kind of scientific or article or music, any kind of literary work comes under this copyright. So uh, so whenever you uh, take 
I think uh, consider our discussion about the property. It may be categorized to two categories. One is tangible, another one is intangible. So tangible means mobile or mobile item and this is uh, component. That is second intangible means intellectual property. So maybe it may be categorized industrial property related or copyright related. So industrial property related means it consists of pattern, design, trademark, and geographical indications. Consider the part of this another is copyright. So this is a major difference between tangible and intangible uh, assets. So under the five criteria we have used, what are the criteria? So I no need to spend more time for this slide. So what is the role of intangible uh, properties? So definitely economically it provides the yeah, rights to legally or uh, to the all creators or inventors. And also it will give you a commercial exploitation of the owner of that intangible properties. So it gives a yeah, capital expenditure and also there is a possible to get that transfer of technology and maybe uh, insist of this and will help to the cultural development also. So it can be sold, it can be bought, and it can be leased, uh, issued of lease or uh, to change to one to others. So it can be assigned to anyone to anybody. So these are the some uh, role of intellectual property as intangible items. So comes to the part of intellectual property rights, what are the items it consists? One is copyright and the related rights. Copyright means you know, that it's a loss to grant of authors, artists, and other kind of, uh, creators to protect you for their literary uh, or this record and uh, give their copyright holders. The trademark, you know very well, some kind of symbols or logo used for this man by the manufacturer or merchant by the goods and services. Then geographical indications. Uh, so many things are there here. The mostly you can use by uh, the what about the specialist in the particular geographical area or discard geographical uh, indications and industrial design? So most, um, uh, almost the majority of the companies companies they are using some kind of visual design for their property or for their making for their inventions. The pattern, so as the acquisition, you know very well what is the pattern and how to get, uh, get patterns and uh, how long uh, it will be valid and everything, you know very well. Then comes to the layout design. And integrated circuit it will be used to modify this uh, circuit based or maybe in the case of database oriented. Another one is undisclosed information. It means that is a secret of some kind of trade secret or some kind of information may be keeping in undisclosed. So this is the items concept, uh, consist of this idea. Uh, so industrial design, trademark, pattern and copyrights and geographical indications. It is exclusive rights given to the person over the creation of their minds as well as this period of time. They will give your full legal rights to uh, all the creators and intangible, uh, it may be considered as intangible potential asset too. So definitely it will support, it will highlight the monopolist. And also if the negative rights means it prevents others to use this creation for a definite time. So you can take the example of the Coca-Cola holdings. The Coca-Cola is an example of trademark. You know very well. But it's the same item that consists of all uh, the category of idea. So the logo, logo of Coca-Cola is a trademark. Another, the shape of the bottle is one the industrial design. And another one is patent. So it may be have an respect of the the bottle equipment comes under pattern. Another one is copyright. The copyright is in respect to the, uh, the text or data is designing or appearing in the website. Then, so a single product can be protected by more than one idea. So this is uh, what are the uh, items are consist of that idea. So pattern, the maximum period for this protection is 20 years. So uh, every year you have to relate. Uh, it comes under the patents of 1970 and amended in 2005. The trademark is maybe the, the lifetime period is lifelong. And so after 10 years, you have to ready and it comes under the trademark like 1999 and amended in 2010. Then design, it, uh, the maximum protection period is 15 years. 
after 10 years, you know, for next year, you have to renew. If considered the design act 2000 and the designs amended rules 2014, then copyright, I think uh, it is valid for 60 years and not required to uh, make any kind of renewal. If considered the copyright act 1957 and it was amended in 2012, then geographical indications it may be yeah, eligible I mean, for lifelong. There is uh, no time schedule. So after 10 years, you have to make the, for the renewal system. So it indicates the Goods and Registration Act uh, under 1999. So these are the what are the options available to get the patent, copyright, or uh, certain of GI and other design also. So what are the uh, actually the five items concerned are IPR. So what item we have to uh, it is mandatory to make a registration. So, patents, industrial design, as well as the geographical indications is very mandatory. It should be registered in proper way. But trademark and copyright is their own interest of the creators. That is not necessary for making any kind of registration. So, as an academician, you know what is uh, uh, copyright and patents. So, uh, in how many academic people, they will have some academic work. Uh, utilizing the resources in the academic institution, making some uh, books uh, like articles, student project, uh, dissertation, thesis, lecture notes. So these are the concerns of copyright act. Uh, the ownership of massive like online course and the film editing. So this is the everything will be covered under copyright. But the pattern means all inventions, whether made by the student, the researcher, or faculty members in the academic institution, developed by utilizing the resources of the particular institute. With a mix of funds, resources, and facilities of this academic institution shall orderly register in the academic institution. Actually, here you have some doubt. You can see here, when all the students or researchers they use the department or university product, so area that the rights given to institute, I mean, together it is responsible by the institute as well as the, uh, the particular researcher. But what now it says, copyrights. Now, ownership rights have been interpreted as circuit and plan varieties. Uh, if a student or researcher or faculty member have used its resources and funds, there will be actually it will be therefore eligible only to avail that the rights only by the institute. Actually, why the candidate is utilizing the university resources and infrastructure automatically is given to the particular, particular institute. So, content be distinct due to copyright. Because of this uh, copyright act. Uh, this data taken uh, two days back, nearly seven or uh, eight million, eight billion uh, contents were delisted due to some uh, request from the creators or uh, the record, I mean, some kind of uh, caution to the creators to delist the content. This is taken two days back. So, what are the reasons whether the contents uh, removed from the Google or any kind of uh, uh, instruction received from the creators or from the government? So automatically, they are keeping some kind of uh, types of uh, remote systems from the, I mean, delisting from the content from the Google. So one is a removal or takedown. So this can be uh, happen in response to DMCA, that, that is called Digital Millennium Copyright Act. So it is a uh, form of copyright compliance. So whenever they receive from through this uh, DMCA, the copy, uh, the, the content may be removed and blocking access. Some countries, it is not possible to remove. So, partially they will, only they will uh, block the access. And demonetization. So, many countries nowadays, uh, even you, uh, people are using the YouTube to uh, making money. So, now, some content may be delisted. Uh, delisted means, due to, they will not be possible to get monetization, monetary benefits. So, this type of removal is called demonetization. And upon suspension or termination. So people, those who are uploading any content, so like YouTube or any uh, media, any uh, Google tools, uh, that may be, uh, that account may be suspended by the Google. Then another one is content filtering. Some content may be permitted by uh, Google as well as the, uh, the creators. Remaining for a part of content may be uh, using by filtering system. Then again, legal action. So any instruction or any uh, direction from the creators, Legally, there will be a fight, and legally, they will be removed from the content. And education awareness. 
So the will also indicate an indication of your course to raise awareness and about blockchain class and best practices. These are the same. So what are the reasons are for delisting from the content? So any anomalies or use of copyright material that may be uh, one of the reasons to delist from the uh, Google. Then violation of fair use or fair dealing. Then DMCA take down uh, use sections. Then protecting intellectual property rights. Then avoiding legal liability and any complaints with the policies and agreements and protecting users' experience and reputations. This is the total number of apps is removed from the Google. So the Twitter also, whenever they receive, uh, receive any complaint from the uh, government of India or any kind of government or any uh, from the ownership of the uh, and creators. So automatically they will have uh, remove the content under the uh, 69A of IT Act. So these are the uh, instructions received and uh, the received from the uh, each and every department. And so in right side you can see the how many uh, contents were delisted. So come to the point of one of the this popularity issue, you know very well. Uh, so the uh, FIR was filed against uh, Sundar Pichai and the other uh, five people. Uh, so a person who uploaded the one uh, print, so without the uh, permission from the uh, producer, so automatically the producer issued the notice and uh, they will not remove. But they filed against uh, This is one of the case studies there. But still not get uh, arrested, but it was uh, against three of these that the FIR filed. Another one is, as we are working in the uh, universities and academic uh, institution, here there is a provision. Uh, so once awarded the degree, within 30 days, the, the thesis must, must be uploaded in the short Ganga. Now what is the procedure? So whenever the evaluation is over, before the viva was it, may be uploaded in the short Ganga. Now they have the revised something uh, in this uh, scenario. Another one is, Whenever the students submitted, whenever the authors uh, published any paper, it is their own product. But whenever you submit a thesis or, uh, in the particular university, once you submit that will be considered as a university asset. So if you want to publish any kind of, make a book or make some kind of document, definitely you must be get the permission from the syndicate or executive council of that particular university. So you know this boy is uh, got uh, orange swords. So you know the I think many people are uh, possible to know about it himself. He has downloaded more number of articles uh, from JSTAR. You can see from 2011 he uh, uh, so frequently he downloaded articles and he was arrested by MIT police on because of the uh, downloading more and more academic journal from JSTAR. But after that he just started, uh, started by and uh, one billion dollar was maybe for, I mean, uh, penalty was given and 35 years in prison. But he not accepted the punishment. Finally, he is not able to come out. He uh, committed suicide. So you know very well this uh, Delhi University history. Three publishers uh, so filed against uh, case against one photographer in Delhi University campus. So because of that uh, vendor, I mean, uh, Jarak shop, uh, they have made uh, many content and they, they issued the, uh, like make as a booklet and issued it to the students. But one, uh, the, the Oxford Press and three, uh, in Cambridge University and Oxford Press and Tyler and Francis, they lost, uh, they filed a case against the, the, the university also. Then finally both said, it, uh, it, it's not the owner, uh, so automatically, finally, after many arguments and discussion, finally the publisher withdraw the uh, file, I mean, cases. So another one is, now that everybody knows, this kind of, that was also a biggest issue. So many people are downloading and getting articles uh, through on the another way. But even though you know, uh, like, uh, legally the approach, I mean, you file the case, uh, which that uh, but uh, still also, but uh, the, uh, Many people they are getting this uh, I mean, doc, I mean 
uh, article or some kind of uh, documents from, by using this style of So my uh, professor, uh, he mentioned, I think, new pattern case. So everybody knows, so NIM is, uh, uh, I mean, another plant in India, it is very uh, medicinal oriented, but it is, uh, uh, the price may be uh, uh, avoided by US, the case finally we got it. Another one is turmeric, so turmeric is uh, one of the valuable products, so the, this, it may be the uh, ownership created by US as well as some Europe countries. So uh, from India, they made the, uh, Major uh, initiatives and uh, finally uh, succeeded. So, SP Balas from you, you know, one of the playback singer, uh, uh, he received a legal notice from Lucy director, Ilay Raja. So, whenever he uh, performing any kind of stage or any concert, uh, he making uh, money. So, uh, finally, uh, Ilay Raja issued a legal notice, you are uh, using my song, I am the proprietor, but uh, still not yet solved these issues also. And the power it. So another one is the issues of Mutu finance. Uh, the, uh, some uh, legally they filed by Shalini, Kalra and other people in 2021. So uh, whoever they have the financial loan or whoever they have the jewelry loan or anything, the database maintained in the Mutu finance. That database has a hidden period they used for some other purpose, legally defined and uh, finally it may be released under. Uh, section 2.9 and 2.0. Then comes to the point of the other indications. You know, some of the product, I mean, some of the items may be uh, very important to the other area. So, in Tamil Nadu, uh, the many, uh, many items is called, I mean, each and every place, they are, it is a very famous, very part, uh, each and every place, like called Madurai Mani, Kanjiburam Sweet Sari, even, you know, very well, Dal Green Tea, or both are each of us, Tripadi Laddon, Akpur Arrange. Uh, Sir, also morning in uh, the session, he uh, delivered about the Basmati rice issue. Uh, so, uh, they filed, I mean, they filed by Pakistan and uh, uh, Europe. So, finally, it was uh, still removed. Then, Madhuri Malli, actually, what is the issue here? This is the comes under geographical <coughs> indications. So, few people, Madhuri Malli, it has a uh, very good smell when comparing other flowers. So it may be very popular. So they have the pattern right celebrity. But uh, after that, uh, they, somebody they made uh, by using other, uh, uh, some kind of uh, hybrid varieties. And they were there and they climbed. Finally, they went to court and uh, appeared because of this smell. That, uh, so they got again this mother and the same uh, G status. So another one is, it is a macaron. Macaron means it is a white color, very less weighted snacks, will be very special in Tutukuri in southern uh, Tamil Nadu. So it is considered at, uh, they are registered. There is also, uh, I mean, uh, some, some people they have made uh, against the act. So due to a short uh, timing of this is trademark and everything, so I know then you know very well the happy means the trademark against the Xiaomi. They use some logo and other thing. So they file the case and other thing. Uh, so automatically that's where it went to the corporate act and finally they got it. <coughs> so this is he's a actor from Tamana. So trademark uh, in this uh, they use some kind of trademark for the print. So in this, this is the first film in Tamana, they use the trademark for this by this actor. Then T series, T series is one of the music uh, the company. They find actually many social media. They upload videos, audio, and everything. Uh, they went to court and uh, they are getting uh, status. But even the court permitted by the social media is not uh, so a few times it is not uh, seriously real. So these are the case studies are there under copyright and intellectual uh, property rights. So finally, uh, so as an academician, we need to. Uh, aware about the intellectual property rights, especially on this copyright, uh, trademark, everything. We need to encourage the uh, younger generation also. We have to give, we are the information our manager, we are the information professionals. So we need to create awareness among the academic community, not only the academic community, any people. 
So, for many sources are there, but everything will be permitted in the limitations. So, we are living in the open access society. We have the freedom to uh, access the resources without paying any cost, without paying any restriction. But we'll be very cautious in the IPR and copyright issues. With this, I conclude my invited talk. So, thank you once again. Thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you so much, uh, Sir Doctor Rana Bandhan, the Librarian Center to University of Tamil Nadu. Sir has uh, presented very nicely, focusing many aspects on practical aspects of intellectual property right. Sir has very comprehensively covered different case studies, different uh, legal proceedings so far taken up with particular difference to India about practical aspects of idea. Right uh, beginning, uh, right from the very beginning uh, uh, regarding intellectual property, intellectual property rights, classification, Sar also has very nicely classified intellectual property in different perspective and the role of intellectual property as in the, uh, intangible property. And uh, Charles just came down to different categories of idea, including different things. Sar also has highlighted about this undisclosed information under trade secrets and other types of information which have different commercial values. Not only that, Sar has also covered some legal proceedings taken up, uh, giving the example of Delhi High Court orders. And Sar also has uh, covered some of the important paper clippings now, which have been published in different uh, media. So it was a very fantastic and a wonderful presentation from our invited speaker, Sar Tanabandan. <coughs> now, our uh, audience are requested to kindly raise uh, issues or other questions after presentation is over, for which uh, we are going to call upon some of the uh, paper presenters in this particular session. Let me call upon name of the uh, paper presenters in this particular session who are going to speak on different perspectives. Uh, may I know if uh, Dr. Antana Sakrabati, Librarian, Bolpur College, Bolpur, West Bengal, is present or not? Is present. Uh, let me just confirm first. Then we have uh, Shubham Das. JRM Jalapur University is present. No? Then we have uh, Dr. Radha 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 Reed present. Is uh, Dr. Radha Radha present? I don't know. Then we have uh, another research scholar from Department of Library and Information Science, University of Gaur Bangla, Malda. And Dr. Vishwaji Das, University Library and University of Gorbanga Bangla, Sumedhu Roy, either Sumedhu Roy or Dr. Vishwaji Das, present or oh, absent. So we have only two papers to be presented in this uh, technical session. So now, with the permission of Vishya and invited speaker, then we call upon the name of Dr. Antara Sakrabati, who is presently librarian at Bolpur College, Bolpur, Bilbo, West Bengal, and the madam is going to explore on the importance of documentation on the secular teachings found in the Vedas, reflecting the cultural heritage of ancient India. The topic is quite casey and very interesting. Let us uh, listen uh, to Dr. Antara Sakrabati. Madam, please. Respected teachers and Elias professionals on the dais and off the dais, myself, Dr. Andhra Chakraborty, Librarian, Bolpur College, 
Today, the topic of my presentation is the importance of documentation on the secular teachings found in the Vedas reflecting the cultural heritage of ancient India. Uh, now, our IPR has uh, always tried to protect literary work, songs, videos, and many more, but to what extent it has able to uh, secure the rights of uh, the oral literature is still a question. Since uh, Vedas, uh, are also called as Shruti, since it's uh, floated through uh, the oral tradition from uh, Guru to his Shishya, the teacher taught tradition of ancient India. And uh, they, that goes on for multiple years. And the practice of using Bhujapatra for writing them down came much later. So uh, uh, this is the, our Vedas. Uh, can be broadly categorized into two parts. Uh, one is the first part is Karmakandu and the latter part is Gyankandu. So my present paper will be based on this Karmakandu part uh, which talks on the secular aspects uh, which are applicable in our daily life whereas Gyanakandu which is basically based on Upanishad is a bit uh, philosophical and spiritual part. Now, let me come into the main parts. So, these are my points. Uh, first, my first point is psychological counseling. So, uh, uh, before that, uh, I will summarize something that uh, Vedas are mainly of four types. Rig Veda, Sham Veda, Atharva Veda and Yogi Veda. So, there are four types of Vedas and uh, each Veda can again be classified into four parts. Uh, the first part is called Shomhita, second is uh, uh, Aradna, then, uh, then uh, we will come Brahmana and uh, the last part is Upanishad. So uh, now each Veda, this Rig Veda, Sham Veda, Yajur Veda and Atharva Veda, all of them have these four parts. Now the the first three parts, Shomita, Brahmana, and Aranya, falls under Karmakanda. And the last part, Upanishad, falls under Gyanakanda. So, our paper will uh, focus on these first three parts. So, so, my first point is psychological counseling. Uh, in our Shraddha ceremony in uh, uh, Hindu Bengali uh, um, uh, cultural practices and religious practices, we see uh, there are uh, Okhondo Gita path for um, at the at our Shato ceremony. So, such that what is Bhagavad Gita is all about? It is actually a psychological counseling uh, done by Sri Krishna for Arjuna, who is perplexed at the battlefield of Kurukhetra. And if you uh, realize that uh, all of our life is uh, small battlefields where we have to battle with uh, diseases, unhappy experiences and all that. So reading Bhagavad Gita actually pacifies the mind of the protagonist and make them able to go on with the life. So similar approach we found in the Vedas which uh, tell us that uh, don't uh, depend for happiness in outer parameters of life. Since outer parameters may change from time to time, so they may lead you to unhappiness. So where your real happiness is inside. So such happiness inside. Such kind of psychological counseling pacifies the mind of the readers of these books. And psychological counseling is a very pertinent and um, prevalent topic since Many of uh, today's world uh, people are going to psychologists since they are not uh, being able to adjust the things happening in their life. Uh, so they are taking some clinical, um, uh, going to some clinical practitioners and having some 
psychological counseling for better lifespan. So, and this practice, uh, this um, uh, practice was also present in uh, uh, these old ancient texts. And we are coming to our next point, Vedangu. So, uh, just break the term, Veda plus Anga means the links of Veda. So, there are six types of uh, Vedanga. Uh, first one is Shikha, then Chondo, Vakaron, Kalpo, Nirukta, and last one is Jyotish. Shikha, what is Shikha? Uh, uh, it mainly focuses on Sanskrit alphabet, accent, their pronunciation, stress. So, these all, uh, um, uh, these all comes under the uh, topic Shikha. Then comes Chondo. Chondo deals with rhetoric, prosody, cadence, and all related issues. Then comes Bakoro. We all of us uh, know about the importance of grammar, knowing the grammar for better understanding of literature, writing, speaking, and everything. Then comes Nirukto. What is Nirukto? Nirukto is the etymology of any word. In the context, what context the word has been used. So uh, that <laughs> this is comes from Nirukto. Then comes Kalpo. Kalpo says, that the what are the rituals should be performed in different stages of life. For example, in rice ceremony, some rituals are being performed. Then in marriage, some rituals is being performed. In um, shrabdo, other rituals are being performed. So these are toned in one Then last one comes Jyotish, and my uh, third point is also astrology. Vedanga Jyotish is one of the earliest ancient Indian book uh, which uh, um, uh, highlights this uh, uh, importance of uh, astrology uh, which tells, uh, which uh, evolved uh, and got many importance in still today. There are many people who are taking astrology as their profession and earning their bread still today. So it started from the age of Veda. Uh, astrology actually determines uh, horoscope and uh, based on it analyzes the effects of Sun, Moon, um, Rahu, Ketu, Shani and their transit throughout their lives. And uh, their, um, their study reveals and their transition in different periods. Uh, also reveal that how the um, uh, person will uh, uh, how the person will go on the ups and downs of life. Uh, so these are being determined from astrology. So um, Rishi Parashar uh, in his the Brihat Parashar of Hora Shastra. This is an eminent book from ancient Indian uh, cult, which is based on this uh, Vedic astrology is still pertinent today as um, uh, astrologers also today um, uh, very much keen to see horoscope for uh, telling the futures of their customers. Then quickly coming into my next point, astronomy. Uh, in Rig Veda, we find different terms like uh, eclipses, uh, stars, planets, uh, there are the term Marut for wind, Ogni for uh, fire, and then uh, Dhumketu. So these are uh, important terms we find in Rig Veda. And our Indian mathematician Aryabhatta, in his Aryabhatya, in his uh, pinnacle astronomical knowledge uh, at that time, which reflect the Vedic concept of astronomy. Then quickly coming into my next point, Vedic Mathematics, which is my five-fifth point. Uh, it, it is a collection of techniques and sutras uh, to solve complex mathematics in a simple way, easy and faster way. It is uh, Sri Bharati Krishna Ji in 1965 who wrote a book called Vedic Mathematics and popularized it. And later on, in different uh, institutions are adopting this course, Vedic Mathematics, for example, our uh, Ramakrishna Mission Belur Vita Mandir is uh, taking that course on, um, certificate course, course on Vedic Mathematics. So, its um, applicability and uh, 
uh, importance in today's world is um, again and again proved. And my next point is Ayurveda. Uh, author of Shohita contains different name of diseases, variety of diseases, including fever, liver problem, um, tumor, psychological issues, and many more. And their respective solutions also given in Author Goveda. Now, the uh, important books uh, like Chorok Shonghita by Chorok, Shushrut Shonghita by Shushrut, uh, highlighted this uh, Vedic Ayurveda in their books very nicely. And uh, the eminent problem which today's Ayurveda doctors also uh, address, like Kof Dosha, Pitta Dosha, Baka Dosha, is uh, still uh, a matter of practice in today's Ayurvedic art as well. Coming into my next point, Puja as a profession. See, uh, there are in, uh, as per history, uh, if we see, um, we have heard many kings have done Putreshti Jogga. Why? For having children. Then Ashramedha Jogga. For widening the boundary of your country. So every Puja and Jogga is done for having some worldly gain. So there was a motive behind it. And this may be this world again or that world again. It means heavenly again. What we call as Punno. Then, uh, so these, uh, there are many uh, uh, Purohit and Pondits who are taking this puja as profession and still today in our different big temples, including Ajanta temple, we are having very uh, learned uh, Purohit as their um, for doing their puja. Then quickly coming into my next point and last point. I, yes, yes, yes. I am coming in my last point. Women education in Vedic age. Uh, there are two types of women in Vedic age uh, who are uh, married within 16 and 17 circles, Shodha Godus. And uh, some are delayed their, um, there are some who delayed their marriage uh, for reading Veda are called Brahmavadinis. Uh, there are important names of Vedic women scholars like Gargi, Moitrei, Apola, Lopa Mudra and so on. Uh, we also have Vedogati, daughter of Sage Kushadhoja, who didn't got married at all. So quickly coming into my conclusion part, that uh, these Vedas uh, are actually cultural treasure trove, which can be analyzed uh, and um, it calls many more research in this field so that the, our ancient cultural, cultural heritage uh, are revived and preserved accordingly for our future generation. So that is all for now. Thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you, Madam Mata, for your nice presentation. Now uh, we have next presenter, uh, Shubham Das. A junior fellow in the Department of Latin Information Science at the University. He will speak on the ultimate guardian of Indian traditional knowledge ideas. Traditional knowledge is the library. Please present within five minutes if possible. Good afternoon everyone. So I am Shubham and today my topic is the ultimate guardian of Indian traditional knowledge ideas that is the traditional knowledge digital library TKDA. So first of all I like to introduce TKDA to you. TKDA is basically a digital repository, a multi digital repository for preserving the Indian traditional knowledge of age old Indian tradition. It was established in 2001 by the Ministry of Ayush and CSR. So it is a product of our, that is a digital library. But there is not a predominant player of any library professional in this TKDL uh, organization. 
it is a first of its time because in the global, global level TKDL is basically set as an example for other developed countries to have their TKDL libraries like China TKDL library or South African TKDL libraries particularly TKDL has many ISM literatures that consists Ayurveda, Punani, Siddha, Shoha, Dikpa and Yoga it has a close access to 16 patent offices in all India basis so that if any patent registered TS is with there, it can be resolved in these 16 patent offices. Now, coming to the outcome. So, I will talk about the objectives of my study, the research methodology, the findings, and the conclusion. So, what are my objectives? I have basically worked on three objectives. First, the TKDL, how TKDL is functioning as a guardian of Indian traditional models. Now, we are the country of numbers. So we need the number. Now how many cases have been resolved by the TKDL uh, as referencing other cases so that the patents can be uh, safeguarded to India only. Third, to identify what are the successful examples, some well known examples I have taken as case studies, that these examples are being safeguarded by the traditional knowledge digital library so that the other developed country cannot biopirate it. Now coming to the research methodology. It is a case study approach and I have using a mixed methodology having my research uh, literature review and content analysis of TKDL website to get my data. Now coming to my findings. So first of all the findings I have uh, given the headline as how TKDL is guarding the idea. So TKDL has some features which is uh, different from the other uh, digital repositories we have because it is a specialized repository for a specialized purpose. So first of all the digitization and the structuring in which the TKDL is basically getting all the data from various languages like Persian, Urdu, Sanskrit which are available in our um, Indian subcontinent and converting and digitizing these documents into five multinational, uh, multinational languages like French, German, Spanish, Japanese the classification the TKDL is using is TKRs that is traditional knowledge resource uh, classification where they are getting into the eight subgroups and dividing it in so that the, if any case is come from any angle it can be fetched in a very short time now the database creation and integration it is a huge repository of 4.54 lakh formulations and practices in Indian traditional knowledge and these are from the text which are available in Ayurveda, in Yoga, Patanjali etc. The access agreements, it has also have access agreements that is a closed access and the access agreements with the international bodies so that it can be using this data of other multinational organizations and share his data, their data to the other organization for citation or the referendum of any data that is in Indian traditional knowledge context already available in the Indian society. Now, again, if TKDL is safeguarding, there should be, should be a law which is promoting him or which is validating him to have that data. That section is section 3 of Patent Act that is amended in 2005, which gives TKDL the power to have that data in this repository and access to the other organization. The TKDL also now working with the other organization that is USTPO. Uh, Europe uh, transport organization that it will access their data and give uh, their uh, its data to them to cite if there is any patent related case and they will acknowledge that as well. Now I am coming to the numbers. Now here you can see yesterday Dr. Homi was present uh, saying something about the Western culture. So in this graph you can see that the two major chunks in blue and yellow are basically US and Europe. So the traditional knowledge patents, which, which should be us, and these are dependent patents, these are not the case file. These case files have been defended by the TKDL by referencing TKDL sources. So the Euro is taking nearly 135 cases. Sample size for TKDL till now in 13 years is 324 cases. Out of which 135 cases are registered in Europe, where TKDL gets involved and get that patents and saying that no, it was available in our Vedas, Puran or anything. So you cannot use that. If we already have that in our, you can have that in your private property. So I have 
it in the last line. That is, three twenty four cases is nearly thirteen years, which means twenty five cases per year. That is, the biopiracy rate is getting two cases per month. If TKD is not present, our traditional knowledge will be shifted to the other developed countries, and they will have that knowledge and promote themselves and having the business out of it. Now, I am giving you three <coughs> cases. So, Yoga sir has shown this, but I am getting the three in the popular cases because these three are different in three different senses. Firstly, I am going to show you the neem patent. The neem patent case was basically WR based and Department of Agriculture filed patent. Here, the organization is saying that there is an anti fungal property to the plants. They are cleaning it. But when the TKDL gets involved, and this organization, RFFP, we are citing the sources from the TKDL, that the need has been already been used in our Vedas and uh, other uh, sacred books, that it has been used for the dermatological diseases. That uh, you also be aware that in your uh, childhood, your parents will have a bath of the neem, neem bath because they know that, that that knowledge of traditional knowledge has been passed on from one generation to other generation but it was not documented or it does not belong to any particular individual it was belong to the whole community the traditional knowledge here comes in but if it is documented in a repository then it can be cited accordingly and very quickly the role of TKDL here comes in now second, the patent of thermonic protein here the interesting fact is the uh, person who are trying to get this patent is basically Indian. They know that from the very beginning that it is available in our uh, system of India. But they still, they applied for the patent in 1995 in the University of Mississippi Medical Center through, the, through that organization. And this was the first example where the TKDL came in and said that in 1997 that uh, no, that is the, not the case. It was already available in Indian uh, traditional knowledge, and that should not be given to them for any uh, for their private patent. Coming to the exotic trademark, so we are talking about the open society and something and Western culture. But this case is a prime example how the open society should be. how the open society is not the good look to the developed nation. Here, the rice cake versus Akina case. In this case, the US has bring up a rice quality. That is, they are not saying it is a basmati rice, but they are saying that this rice is particularly for them. So, in this case, they are showing 20 claims. If you have to file a patent, they have you have some claim for that rice. And they are saying 20 claims out of that 15 to 17 claims are similar to that of basmati rice. And when this claim has been, if this is successful, then what they are saying that in the uh, where South American markets and the other markets, they are stopping the import of Indian basmati rice. So they are cutting our business and having their business by biopirating our traditional knowledge, not by having themselves. So, coming to the problem statement, as I am telling about the TKD, not every organization is a perfect organization, but every organization has to face some problems. So, first of all, my uh, previous uh, presenter told about the oral traditions. The TKDL is having a problem that it cannot document the oral traditions because it has to be documented somewhere or the other. If it is in the oral tradition, how can a digital user take it, feel it in their report? Uh, Secondly, if it is in a, any sacred books like Veda or anything like that, there is a communal ownership. That is, certain section of the religion or the society is taking that book as our book and not taking it as a whole as an Indian group. And thirdly, it's the accessibility and technology advance coming to the data. The TKD is a problem that TKD is a closed access uh, uh, like, uh, repository. It is not open access yet. There is a provision in 2023 that uh, there will be an open access that uh, let the future decide what will happen. And I am now concluding my presentation saying the library professional should be actively preserved. The local traditions and promote the researchers to have the documented the traditional knowledge in some way or the other so that it will be registered in any repository and it will help our country only to safeguard our patent so that it cannot be used other way or other means. Thank you.
Thank you, thank you very much. We have a great time. We don't have uh, more presenters now. Larani, Absent, and Arlenko uh, both also absent. absent. So uh, now, technical session is open to all. If there is any supplements to be met, any comments, any jokes, Maybe for the sake of the participants, I will ask one question to Dr. Anna uh, Why is uh, Sundar Pichai was not arrested? No, why? Why? Why not? Get arrested. Actually, the FIA filed against Sundar Pichai, but the content is uploaded by the individuals, not by the Google, not by the Sundar Pichai. <coughs> Second thing, actually, it is not uh, that uh, a filmmaker, that they are not having this uh, copyright uh, properly and they are not filed properly. You are satisfied then? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay. Now I request our joint chairperson. Now I request our joint chairperson, Mr. Pinkrat, to present us on this demonstration. I'm calling on the names. Presenters, please come forward and collect your gift. Dr. Ankara Chakraborty, Sukham Rash. Thank you to our joint chairpersons, Professor Moses Mark Naga and Professor C. H. Mukherjee for conducting this session. Thanks to our invited speaker, Dr. K. Sanjana, for his speech. I would like to convey my gratitude to our honorable dignitaries, esteemed speakers, participants, and organizing team. Today's technical session comes to an end. The session is going to start after the lunch break. Please assemble here at sharp 15 p.m. Thank you.
I'll try my best. So uh, before I I start uh, today's uh, uh, my today's talk, I let me uh, with the permission of chair, let me have the privilege uh, to uh, extend my great uh, uh, heartful gratitude to uh, Professor Udayan uh, Bhattacharya sir because uh, he has uh, a very uh, crucial uh, role so far in my professional life. My uh, this professional uh, career has been uh, ten years. I have spent as a uh, uh, assistant professor in uh, library and information science. And throughout these ten years, he has been very supportive for me. Why it is so? Two three examples I'll give. Uh, in 2013, I joined Mizoram uh, Central University as assistant professor. So the uh, first professional I met was Professor Udayan Bhattacharya sir. So, I, and I was just uh, very new, just uh, one day before I was uh, uh, a student in Delhi University, the ne very next day I became assistant professor in Mizoram Central University. So, you can just uh, imagine what kind of, uh, you know, mental set was, still I was, that time uh, I was feeling like a student. So, when sir met, sir insisted to uh, just uh, go for PhD, get re-registered uh, yourself for PhD because earlier I was pursuing my PhD before joining Mizoram University in, uh, from Delhi University. Uh, after joining, my registration was cancelled. So there I got myself re-registered. Then after, uh, he was a frequent uh, visitor in Central, uh, Mizoram Central University. Then uh, when, uh, my, when I was awarded uh, my PhD in Mizoram University, sir was the examiner. So uh, that is one role. Then, under my supervision, when my first uh, MPhil scholar was awarded uh, her uh, MPhil degree, he was the examiner. <laughs> then after, um, uh, my first PhD scholar was awarded under my supervision, again he was the examiner. So, uh, and all the time, whenever, uh, wherever I am stuck, I just make a phone call to sir, and he always uh, is so supportive and he gets the solution for me. And another one or two examples I give, uh, when I was in Mizoram Central University, he was the first person who invited me to uh, speak uh, in one of the webinar. It was online. So again, he was the first to invite. And in physical mode, uh, today, first time I am speaking as an invited speaker. So again, he has invited me. So sir, thank you so much uh, to you for being so kind to me. I am really uh, thankful to you and I will always remain grateful to you. So now, so now, uh, uh, let us come to the uh, today's uh, topic of discussion. Actually, I have been given the task to speak on IPR in social media context. So this title, I decided that because uh, so far uh, everyone and I was lucky enough that so no no one has touched upon. Otherwise, my task would have been a much bigger, uh, a bit difficult because something is already being discussed and there is no use to uh, rediscuss uh, the same, uh, same thing. Then my title is IPR, the age of social media, role of allies professional in safeguarding the intellectual property uh, rights. Then uh, the discussion, discussion out uh, outlines, these will be the discussion outlines for my today's, uh, today's talk. So uh, let us start without wasting much time, this setting the theme. Actually for last two days we are discussing uh, this intellectual we are discussing this intellectual property uh, rights and uh, many speakers have already spoke on the intellectual property uh, rights but why uh, is it uh, this is not something new that only today or for last few years we are discussing it is started from this Paris uh, convention Burger, uh, this uh, Bern convention and all so but why this we are discussing actually it is the need of the R and T until unless the society exists this IPR issues will be the uh, uh, means uh, topic of discussion always. So uh, the, now we are discussing why because the social media, social media has uh, played a uh, very uh, important role for this uh, these IPR issues have been discussed. So the social media is one thing and the current scenario everyone has become uh, you know uh, the creator now. You need not to be an academician. Uh, many videos we are uploading. So, being uh, everyone the creator, the discussion for these IPR issues becomes important. 
and this importance of safeguarding IPR, especially in the age of social media, the uh, safeguarding IPR is another very important thing. That is why we are discussing these uh, IPR issues in social media context. Then uh, the challenges, of course, when uh, 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 each and every coin has its two parts, one positives and negatives. So same here also, of course, social media has brought uh, the uh, platforms, it has given the platforms to express ourselves. Uh, to express our creativity, but at the same time, it has given uh, given us uh, the uh, you know some challenges also. There is of course risks are risks are involved in that, and challenges are also uh, uh, are as well. Then revamp classroom teaching. Then classroom teaching is also uh, again changed because of this uh, social media. Earlier uh, there was you know now uh, just uh, in uh, introductory part, the Professor Rathi Mahapatra sir already said that now this research publication and ethics it has become the part and partial of this syllabus for PhD coursework, it is mandatory. Uh, you all would agree. Then uh, the increased accessibility. Then accessibility is also uh, has you know it has reached information has reached to each and every one. Of course, it is the uh, you know motto of uh, this uh, our profession. But at the same time, the how much uh, you know fair use of that information we are making. That is another important thing. That is why we are discussing uh, uh, today this uh, IPR, and it will be discussed till the society remains. So then, uh, intellectual property rights. In brief, I'll go to go through it because already been discussed a number of times since yesterday. So according to this World Intellectual Property Organization, it refers to the creation of mind such as inventions, literary, uh, literary and artistic work, design and symbols, names and images used in commerce. And this means that when someone creates something tangible or intangible, the creator has ownership of that product and said creator has the controlling rights to the uses of that uh, product. Of course, when uh, some, uh, we are creating something, so of course, we need, we have, uh, we should have the right who will use and up to what extent and how the uh, content created by me will be used. So means the creator has full right and that is the intellectual property right whatever is being created by the creator. Then but now the, this is uh, where it gets blurry when it comes to social media. Still, of course there are uh, cyber uh, laws and all but still as we, in uh, this IPR uh, when we discuss this uh, uh, still there is no much clarity in social media context IPR how uh, it uh, it should be enforced in uh, up to what extent uh, the uh, the uh, means uh, rules and uh, rules whether permits or not it is uh, you know still uh, blurry there is no clear cut rule that uh, if you use this much of course uh, in uh, uh, this uh, academics there are uh, you know rule if you this much if you plagiarize something then this much punishment is not it but uh, this uh, in uh, this videos. In social media platforms, we are, you know, uh, every day we are uploading the videos, we are using some other's content. In that case, in that matter, it is not uh, a very, you know, clear, uh, clear cut instruction how much, uh, how it should be used and how much, uh, whether it comes under copy, uh, this IPR or not. That is still, uh, you know, a, a bit confusing. Then uh, here it comes types. Uh, in brief, I'll go through, go through it already. It is uh, also discussed. This, uh, there are many, uh, many uh, other uh, also the types, but I have uh, this uh, five only I have listed. One is copyright, patents, trademarks, industrial design, and trade secrets. The copyrights, the general rule of for uh, copyright is it lasts for six, 60 years. And uh, if the author, the author, in the case of original uh, uh, literary, dramatic music, music and artistic work, the 60 year period is found from the uh, death of uh, the uh, that uh, creator. So in case of patents, it is for 20 years, in case of trademarks, 10 years, then industrial design, 10 years minimum, and, and uh, it varies country to country. Then trade secrets, a trade secret can be protected for an unlimited period of time unless it is discovered or legally acquired by others and disclosed to the public. Then here, here it, it comes, we express ourselves in uh, through uh, different ways. So here some of them I have listed. So we are writing poems, stories, scholarly articles, doing painting, taking photographs, singing, making films, dancing, performing on these stage. These are several ways we are, you know, expressing our, 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 ourselves. 
so then uh, copyright uh, copyright it is all about you know the rights of authors that uh, you know safeguard uh, the right of authors creators artists for original literary artistic musical drama to make copies to sell distribute to make derivative works to translate to perform to communicate to public and to broadcast this actually uh, this about trademark uh, about this industrial design i included my uh, powerpoint but throughout uh, yesterday throughout i was there so i saw that uh, all are discussing so yesterday night i moved this so this copyright i kept so uh, on the copyright i'll be discussing and uh, here comes the major part of this uh, today's talk the social media the social media basically these are interactive technology that facilitate the creation sharing and aggregation of content ideas interest and other form of expression to virtual communities and network so social media has uh, you know given us several uh, platforms where we can you know share our content we can use the content of others so uh, that is the beauty of social media but of course as i said in the uh, beginning that uh, every coin has its two part so if uh, the social media also had is its uh, positives and negatives aspect both so uh, as far as this positive aspects are concerned it gives us connectivity we are uh, we feel connected to each other i am sitting in this uh, uh, in uh, uh, jadavpur university and i can get connected to you know person sitting at any of the corner of uh, the globe so then uh, information sharing it has become uh, you know very easy within a moment you can share uh, the information to anyone sitting in any of the corner that is also the beauty of the social uh, uh, media platforms then networking of course it gives the chance to networking because we in our daily life, daily busy life we cannot meet each and every one uh, you know frequently but sometimes what happens you uh, you uh, you will agree with me that uh, we have uh, you know uh, many, many professions we never never met before we never met uh, in, in person but we know each other why it is so because of the social media platforms uh, for example uh, in my case also uh, uh, four or five uh, you know professionals Uh, we never met, but we know each other. Why it is so? Through social media networking. Then uh, this uh, community community building. Many you know within your profession you can build your community. It is not required to you know meet in uh, in person. So that also community you can build as per your interest, as per your choice. Then uh, the business promotion in uh, uh, in whatever business you are, you can promote through social media platform. That is another. positive aspect of this uh, social media and creativity and self expression you know that uh, uh, there was a time when uh, when social media platforms were not there uh, uh, that time if uh, somebody you know their uh, actually their skill or their talent it was you know uh, suppressed by themselves or means they were not because or automatically because they were not in the position to express themselves but now because of this web 2.0 social media platforms they can share their uh, uh means uh, ideas they can share their uh, uh, skills they can share their talent uh, talent and riches to uh, mass uh, and uh, i will give you one or two uh, very beautiful examples uh, for this uh, one is uh, have you heard about this uh, there was one uh, person he got a very famous uh, dancing uncle dancing uncle there was one song uh, song on uh, of uh, this govinda ha huh? दिल बहलता है मेरा आपके आ जाने से है ना तो ओवरनाइट ही बिकेम सो पॉपुलर व्हाई इट इज सो हैड देयर बीन यू नो नॉट सोशल मीडिया देन विद इन लोकेलिटी इट इज वेरी डिफिकल्ट टू नो दैट व्हाट काइंड ऑफ टैलेंट वन पर्सन हैज इज नॉट इट सो दैट इज द ब्यूटी ऑफ दिस एंड आई फ्रॉम कोलकाता आल्सो रानू मंडल Uh, Ranu Mandal was well, there. She also, I uh, you know, became famous uh, overnight. But now nobody knows where she is. But uh, she became popular. And uh, then uh, some negative aspects of the social media privacy concern. You are sharing your content now. You know that uh, we, you know, our uh, uh, professional life is one thing. But our even personal life also we are sharing. Uh, whosoever you never met uh, one person, suppose. But he or she knows uh, everything about you. That how many kids you have, whether you are single, committed, huh? is not it? Because everything we share. Wherever we are, we are moving today. Uh, suppose Delhi, I am moving, so I, I just update over social media that I am going to Delhi. 
Uh, so that kind of privacy concern is also, you know, uh, the one of the negative aspect. So you have to be very, you know, care careful with regard to that. Then cyber bullying, you can, you know, bully to, uh, to anyone. If you one to one, if you do this, then you may get, uh, you know, very strong reaction. Uh, but over uh, social media, you can say any anything to anyone. Uh, because you are sitting uh, apart, so you may not get that kind of you know strong uh, reaction or uh, response. But if you one to one, if you do, then you may face uh, the you know music. So that is another issue. Then fake news and misinformation. As I said in the beginning, that everyone has become uh, the creator. That everyone has become the creator uh, without uh, checking the authenticity or uh, you know. Uh, with full of authority, anyone can share, anyone is sharing. So that is another negative aspect of this uh, uh, social media. As uh, one beautiful example, I'll give you that uh, uh, during this COVID period, we all you know receiving so many uh, messages through WhatsApp or any other social media. But without thinking much, we were sharing uh, to our friends, to our whosoever you know, all became doctors. Is not it? No? All became doctors that time. So that is another uh, negative aspect of this uh, social media platform. Then addiction and distraction. You all will agree with me that uh, when, when uh, you know, suppose our uh, uh, going to bed uh, time is 9.30. But uh, sleeping time, uh, Insta Instagram reels, we, once we start, uh, we spend, you know, 30 minutes, one hour, Two hours, and the, when uh, you know, until uh, the mobile fall, uh, fall down on our face, we do not uh, put uh, our phone aside. Is not it? So that is uh, that is uh, this addiction and distraction. Of course, if you are in your education, in your academics, it distracts. That is another issue. The negative impact of mental health. This social media has created you know negative impact on mental uh, this mental health also. One uh, beautiful example I'll give you. This uh, that uh, uh, there was uh, one one uh, game, one game uh, I forgot the name of that game. Very you know, uh, with, uh, is, the small kids they became very aggressive. They started you know attacking each other. PUBG, PUBG. So uh, PUBG see is even small kids they are you know fighting with their own siblings within home. Uh, I have uh, you know uh, my personal experience. Uh, one of my Friend, his own, you know, uh, house. Two, two brothers, he say, I'll kill him, and he was so aggressive. So, what kind of, you know, where uh, we are moving towards? So that is, uh, you know, another uh, very, you know, uh, uh, big uh, negative aspect or very important issue to be discussed uh, about social media. The impact on relationship. You all will agree that uh, now there was a time when we are, we were having in our house only one telephone but now we all have uh, the, uh, our personal mobile phones for dinner if we are waiting for or uh, you know suppose five family members are sitting together but they are busy with their mobile they do not talk to uh, each other so that is affecting our relationship that is another important uh, you know uh, ask, uh, negative aspect uh, to be you know discussed and to find to find out the solution about this social media so now, now here it comes the uh, social media and intellectual property. So remember that little box one needs to click uh, agree to a social media platforms. When, whenever we, we are you know, creating account on any of the social media platforms, it asks terms and conditions uh, to check. Uh, then only you can go to next step. Is not it? Hmm? So, uh, so, but clicking on terms and conditions, uh, we, ne we never read. Forget about this uh, uh, creating a social media account. Even we, if we go for you know bank for some loan and all, they also we know that the money matter is involved. But still, we do not read their, their terms and conditions. It's not it because we are in hurry. Okay, they are giving loan. Just sign and just get it and go go away. It's not it. So same here. But it doesn't mean that if you are checking that uh, you know you are agreeing that terms and condition, it doesn't mean that your IPR is in you know danger. You are the you know holder. You your IPR, your intellectual property rights will be it still can be safeguarded. So it doesn't mean that anything, uh, everything is gone from your end. So uh, then uh, uh, for social media platform to function the way they do, 
this necessary, but this does not does not override intellectual property laws. As I said, simply checking the checkbox it doesn't mean that uh, your uh, now uh, your intellectual property is no more with you, or your you know privacy is no more with you. Of course, it is with you, but you should uh, be aware about the you know laws or the rules. Then. Uh, uh, then here comes the social media's impact on intellectual property. The social media platforms have made it simpler for artists to share their work and reach a larger audience. But they have also made it easier for others to steal and misappropriate their creation. As I said, each and every person has become the creator. They are uh, sharing their, uh, you know, uh, the audios, videos, or any of the any type of the content. But at the same time, uh, one side it has uh, made easy, but at the same time. The copy, the copying also is has been made easy. Anybody can, you know, steal your uh, data, steal your, you know, uh, this uh, creation. So that is uh, uh, the other, uh, the one of the uh, most important impact of, uh, you know, social media on intellectual property. Then the unauthorized use of copyrighted information, such as for photographs, music, and films, is a growing concern. Another, another thing is, uh, I forgot the uh, name of the presenter. Somebody was, you know, the deep, uh, deep in videos. Somebody discussed in uh, during, uh, his presentation. That is uh, another impact. Then uh, detecting and monitoring unlawful content is becoming increasingly difficult because of the speed and volume of which content is disseminated on social social media. Means monitoring and authorization is again uh, the another impact of this social media over this intellectual property. Then uh, risk and challenges, of course, uh, this uh, uh, so, uh, social media risk and it, it has brought some, uh, you know, risk and challenges for uh, IPR, what is that? Content, volume and speed. Uh, one, uh, I think, uh, the previous uh, invited uh, speaker, Dr. Dhan S. Dhanmandan, he mentioned in his uh, presentation about J Store. J store, how it was, you know, that one boy he, you know, downloaded number of, and he was arrested. Uh, so that, that is uh, that is this. Then identifying copyrighted content. So in social media, sometimes it becomes very difficult whether this particular content is uh, comes under this copyright or not. So that is another uh, risk and challenges. Uh, sometimes you know unintentionally we use that content. But if if we are in you know uh, if we are safe then we are lucky enough otherwise somebody you know may put you in trouble. So then uh, global global reach. So now now this uh, social media suppose uh, uh, because of this uh, global reach this is another uh, risk or threat uh, for this IP I, IPR. Suppose somebody has you know uh, st uh, stolen your idea and sharing is you know in a moment he can share to a number of you know, uh, pe people. Uh, so suppose if you catch hold of that uh, that person, but it is uh, has been already shared your idea, then it becomes very difficult to get control over that. So that is uh, another issue of that. Then copyright infringement. Of course, it is also there without you know knowing. Sometimes we copy, and sometimes intentionally we copy. So uh, then uh, content ownership and control. Once it is over social media, then it becomes very difficult to you know get control over that uh, uh, creation then cyber attacks and hacking we all know that uh, we can, uh, sometimes what happens of, uh, over uh, our uh, social media accounts we you know our uh, uh, friends account is hacked or sometimes our account is also hacked then we used to send you know uh, that a person who a hacker used to send messages uh, then uh, I am stuck at so and so place please credit this much amount to this account uh, have you come across uh, yes. such experience? So then our friends they send messages uh, or they put uh, it on their WhatsApp status. My account is hacked. Please don't do not entertain such messages. So that is this cyber attacks and hacking. Then misuse of intellectual property fraud or fraudulent acti activity. Sometimes our uh, this uh, because of this social media our intellectual property is uh, you know being misused also. Then. Uh, then how social media has affected the society. So the act of content sharing and collaborating are uh, quite uh, prolific in the social media world. This is how one gains an audience, expand their market, their followers and interact with their community. Yes, it is a kind of 
you know, race to, you know, at least one hour. We feel like in our personal life, we do not have, you know, 10 friends, but in our social media accounts, we are having, you know, hundreds or thousands or less followers. We feel like, you know, we are, uh, nah, nobody is uh, like us. Nah, we are more social, but actually less than 10 friends we have. So that is another uh, issue that uh, social media has, you know, affected this society. That is in, in this way, then with the probably the uh, operation of digital distribution and duplication made easier through social media, an inherent problem has risen the theft of intellectual property. You may have come across because you know, all our, you know, academicians uh, sitting sitting over here, then uh, uh, if something is, you know, earlier there was time when, uh, when you used to uh, get, put some efforts to copy the content because it, it was in, you know, handwritten form. You, uh, either you need to write, uh, or you would uh, uh, get it copied and take it to your home, then there also you have to write. But now, just copy, just paraphrase and use. Uh, many of us, uh, you know, uh, I would not say many of us, but those who are ignorant. <laughs> because uh, many uh, uh, professors are also there, so I have to be very careful. <laughs> so. Then, consequently, what are the you know consequences uh, of the social media that oversharing without thinking much is the new normal now? Sitting together, as I uh, gave one example, sitting together, four five family, family members, but they are not, uh, you know, giving time to each other, they are not talking to each other, they are busy with their mobile. And they are they keep on, you know, sharing uh, the content without thinking much whether, and this may put them in trouble. So that is, you know, new normal of this uh, uh, society. And I do not know till how long it will remain, but uh, those who are well aware, they should start thinking from now onwards. Then uh, see, uh, another example can be, uh, honestly, I know this is the time of Google, if I ask within a second, you can go, you will Google and you will answer. So honestly, you say, you can be answer uh, the following founder of WhatsApp and the, and the year, founder of Instagram and the year, founder of Research Yet and the year, founder of Facebook and the year. Yes or no? Honestly, you say. Huh? We all are using all these uh, social media platforms. Hmm? So Facebook, you must be knowing. And that is also... Uh, Mark Zuckerberg is also known to us, not because he uh, is the founder of uh, this Facebook. He founded it in 2004. But we know since when? When he met Modi ji, huh? many memes uh, were you know uh, were popular. Then only we know that there is some Mark Zuckerberg is the founder of this Facebook. Is not it? But others, I am sure you, you may not. WhatsApp, the most uh, you know used, most uh, familiar we all are to this WhatsApp social media platform. But how many of us know about this? Who is the you know uh, founder? In which year it was founded? Is not it? So it shows that how much you know uh, ignorant we are. Blindly, you know, somebody is somebody said that uh, WhatsApp is a very good app. You just install and uh, start using in this way. So you just install and we start using uh, the you know without thinking much. That is the previous uh, slide says over sharing without thinking much. We do not think before sharing. So now the answer here. WhatsApp it was this. Brian Acton and John Gorman and as far as Mark Zuckerberg is concerned, see, we know only Mark Zuckerberg because he met Modi ji and he visited India and Modi ji visited the US there, uh, Modi ji met Zuckerberg. But Mark Zuckerberg was not alone. Okay, remember Mark Zuckerberg was not alone. So his, you know, co-founders were also there. But we do not know their name. Although we are using these social media platforms almost daily. Then here comes uh, this, uh, uh, and please don't mind, I also do not know the name who uh, founded this and in which year. Only just I was going through, I was just uh, thinking about whether I know this or not. So let us ask the audience whether they know or not, or I am the only one. So I now I am happy that all are same. So, protecting your social media 
uh, your IPR over uh, on social media, how we can protect this social media has revolutionized the way we create and share content, but is it has also raised concern about intellectual property rights. Of course, we all have become creator, we all you know sharing our content, but at the same time it has given the rise to discuss the issues with, with regard to intellectual property rights. That is, you know, another issue then it is important to understand the different types of intellectual property rights and how they apply to social media. That is another uh, issue then by taking proactive steps to protect your intellectual property, you can ensure that your content is used the way you intend to uh, it to be. Then uh, ways to protect, how you can uh, protect your IP or over social media. Be aware first and foremost, uh, you know, our thing is uh, or point is be aware of your rights. Until unless you are aware about your rights, you cannot uh, safeguard your rights. First, awareness is important. What are your rights? Then register your intellectual property. If you have created something, just get it registered by the authorized agency, whosoever is taking care of this. Then monitor your intellectual property. Once it is uh, being uh, registered, then you have to monitor who is using, whether proper credit is being given to me or not, that you have to monitor. Then if you find someone is using without giving you know proper credit, then you can take legal action against that person. Then use social media tools. So social media, of course, each and every platform has uh, its uh, you know privacy settings. There you can you know uh, make your uh, account you know privacy settings. You can uh, use so that only uh, you uh, those can use your uh, data or your you know creation. Whoever is your friends, but the problem is. That uh, we are in a day, we are you know receiving, we are getting a number of friend requests, and blindly we are you know adding each and every one to our account because, as I said, it is the race of having the maximum number of followers. So that you have to be very careful about that also. Then uh, here comes the most important uh, thing. Before I start this, I would just like to quote yesterday in keynote address, Professor Aki Bhatt. Uh, he was, you know, mentioning about this uh, uh, life is, about life science professional that अरे यार आप लोग हनुमान अपनी शक्ति को पहचानो है ना तो intellectual property rights also another uh, you know example I give and uh, one more uh, sentence I would like to add which uh, professor but uh, of course uh, quoted that अपनी शक्ति को पहचानो अगर जड़ी बूटी नहीं तो पूरा पर्वत उठा लाओ है ना you people are like that and uh, this uh, role of libraries, then here comes the role. And before this, one more example uh, is next to my uh, mind. Uh, in uh, our Central University of Gujarat, uh, the Education Department, Department of Education, and uh, Department of Social Management, they contacted me, uh, contacted me a few days back. And they said, Sir, uh, we want you to uh, talk, uh, talk about this intellectual property rights. Uh, to our uh, PhD scholars, there will, there will be uh, uh, PhD scholars of two three departments. So I said, why is number so many professors are already there? So and see, of course I have become associate professor, but I, I, I still feel I am assistant professor because it, it's been only six or seven months. So I said, why why me? There are many other professors. They said, no no sir, uh, you are life science uh, teacher, so it is your area. When others believe, then why you don't believe uh, on yourself? So that is uh, the example. So IPR basically is meant for the people. Then here comes uh, what kind of role uh, allies professionals can play to safeguard our uh, you know uh, IPR, especially in this social media context. First, education and awareness. Only allies professionals are there. See, the teachers are concerned to their own department. Whatever they are teaching to their own students. But the allies professionals, they are the teacher of teachers, one thing, and they are the teachers of the whole university. So it is their responsibility to educate each and everyone who belongs to that organization and create awareness about their intellectual property rights and how they can 
safeguard their rights. So that is, uh, it is their responsibility. Then policy development. They can, you know, uh, help the organization in policy development. You, uh, you agree with me that uh, wherever there is a committee over this IPR issues with related to this intellectual property, especially this copyright, copyright. Uh, mostly we discuss copyright being uh, the you know academicians. So always librarian is there. You all uh, will agree uh, with me. Librarian will be there. And one more thing, the why this uh, responsibility to uh, to check the plagiarism is being given to library? Why not? Uh, there is some you know special shelf or shelf or uh, established for this uh, to check uh, this plagiarism. There may be some, uh, like, just like placement cell, some professor may be assigned the responsibility. You just look after this. It's not it. Why it is being given? There is, you know, some reason. They also, they will not, uh, you know, tell you openly. They will not tell you openly, but internally they feel that you are the person who can take care of such important issues. So that is another, another thing. Then uh, digital rights management in the age of because uh, being the LS profession, we are dealing with the digital information now nowadays. So digital right management, we know better than others about this. Uh, what are the digital rights? So that uh, that digital right management, uh, that uh, the awareness also we can create about what uh, uh, rights they have for their digital information. So that is another uh, role of that is collection uh, collection development. Then I, I care related issue while uh, sometimes you know as professionals they you know uh, whatever is available on uh, you know forget about this uh, paid uh, information but they in addition to that they try to get uh, the information which is available in open access. Suppose if it is uh, the same responsibility is given to some other uh, department or some administration so but uh, Google whatever is there they will just uh, download and they will upload. But who will take care of this uh, digital right management? So, LS professional or library is the organization which is supposed to take care of this uh, digital right management and accordingly develop the collection. Then, reference and consultation. Whosoever finds any you know issue with with regard to this. Uh, plagiarism, they visit library and there they meet allies professional students. Means generally I have worked in uh, two universities. My experience says this. I hope uh, you will also agree with me that with related uh, regarding this such issues, copyright, they visit the library, they consult the allies professional who is you know, who's, uh, sitting over there and who is looking after such issues. Then uh, advocacy and outreach. Then IPR again. You just uh, you know uh, in, uh, involved in the this advocacy and outreach. You just uh, support the awareness. You just ask the student to keep themselves aware about their you know rights, intellectual property rights, and the uh, and its uh, you know uh, what kind of problems if they you know uh, uh, do any kind of infringement, whether it is, it is copyright or any any other. In what kind of trouble, uh, trouble they can, uh, you know, put. then research and scholarship. Of course, as I said, this, uh, in uh, libraries, uh, they are taking care of this uh, plagiarism. If somebody comes and suppose uh, if it is uh, the content is being plagiarized, so they should, you know, they should not humiliate that uh, scholar. But instead of humiliating, they should just uh, give uh, that uh, scholar some time. They should, should sit with him uh, or her and just uh, convey that uh, what I, uh, what you can do in uh, uh, in uh, how you can come in a better way with this content and uh, how much it is plagiarized such issues and how it can be avoided. So that kind of you know research and scholarship you can uh, 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 promote. So uh, these are uh, the you know these were the role that LS professional. There may be many more, but uh, actually this uh, I prepared only just one or two. Based that this GPT, so that is why I could find only this. And this here, uh, here is my concluding remarks. It can be concluded that the intellectual property rights in the social media is are complex and multifaceted, requiring users, content creators, platforms, and regulators to be na navigate a dynamic landscape of legal, ethical, and technological considerations. And awareness of these rights, responsibilities, and best practices is essential for fostering creativity, innovation, and respect 
for intellectual property in the digital era. It should not be like whatever is available is just download and you can use proper credit must be given to the creator. Then uh, uh, here this quote, uh, I thought uh, yesterday night I added that wake up dear sir, madam, legally take hold of your intellectual goods, please. So means awareness is important. You just know about your rights, then only you can, you know, uh, survive in this uh, today's social media age. Then uh, one more, and uh, another thing is no significant learning can occur without a sense of ethics in it. So be, a, be ethical, if you are using any of the content, just give to proper credit to the creator of that content. And But uh, since uh, this copyright and this another IPR issues are there, it doesn't mean that you uh, stop yourself and you stop yourself to create, you know, something new or you do not use other's content. Of course you use, but these three, be ethical and care, uh, this caution, create. These three words you always remember, be careful what you are using, from where you have taken, whether you have given proper credit to the creator of that content or not, then be cautious. Okay, and then create. So these three, it should, you know, remain always with you. And then uh, another thing, keep in mind the main objective of the National uh, Intellectual Property Rights Policy as uh, Professor Artyom Apatra sir yesterday mentioned. So that also yesterday I added. So creative India, innovative India. Be creative, be innovative. So with these, uh, with these words, I stop myself and uh, I hope I could uh, justify my presence over here. And uh, uh, before I stop, uh, I just, uh, uh, would uh, like to convey my thank to the chair and uh, co-chair and uh, to a special, a special thank goes to you all for patiently listening because after lunch, just after lunch it is very difficult to listen to the speaker. Thank you, thank you so much. Every, everyone will admire that uh, debut my century. Yes. Debut my century. <laughs> thank you, thank you. Thank you. Thank you, Amit sir, uh, for your uh, insightful as well as the disturbing deliberations. And I think you have uh, covered uh, uh, many aspects of uh, IPR and that and, and its benefits, merits, disadvantages, and advantages and shortcomings uh, in respect to the social media, which we are, right now we are uh, very much acquainted with the social media platform. So, uh, he already, uh, uh, he was talking about the uh, creative mode, that different types of modes that we are of our expressions, and as well as he was talking about the uh, in social media uh, platform, the more collaborating uh, aspects of the social media, which uh, is very, very uh, advantageous to uplift our society. And as well as uh, he was talking about the, some benefits as well as uh, role of library professionals, because we are always uh, attached with the information sharing and social media platform is a very good uh, platform for sharing the information. So, uh, yes, uh, in view of the, uh, we have to take care of the legal as well as the ethical uh, terms of the uh, using the social media because uh, legal aspect, aspect is there because the IP here. Is, uh, I think it is in uh, legal in law also. We have one uh, paper in LIS curriculum, but they have their one course in intellectual property rights. So they are more uh, familiar with the idea. So we have to uh, look after the legal aspects of the idea also. So thank you, sir, for your deliberations and best wishes to you. And and right now, we are in the technical section 7, uh, so 
Uh, how many presentations? There are four papers here. So I will call the name of the presenter one by one. So I will, I will call upon the first presenter, Alamin Rahman. Are you here in the hall? No. no. Next one is Susmita Vasu Sarkar, Dr. Susmita Vasu Sarkar. Please come and present your paper. And her uh, paper's title is Impact of Intellectual Property Rights on Social Media, Challenges and Strategies in India. Dr. Susmita Vasu Sarkar, librarian, Bunkim Sardar College, Khandra Kali, South Jewish And she is my also. She is my classmate in my university um, years. So, so can we go through your presentations? Person, person. and uh, other dignitaries on the dais and off the dais. So, just uh, I'll take the one minute, okay? Yeah, yeah. Oh, sorry for your So, is there any order? Uh, I'll come up to the name. Jiao Raman is here or not? Yes, he is here. And another one, Arindam Nath. Arindam Nath is also present. And Sangeeta Saha. So we have to look after the time also. <laughs> time is lost. So, can I start now? So, so you can argue. Yeah. This affected chairperson, co chairperson, and other dignitaries on the dais and off the dais, uh, my respected teachers, and my dear audience, myself, Dr. Shushmita Shankar Basu, librarian, Bumbum Shankar College, Tanga Kali, South Jewish and today my paper is the impact of intellectual property rights on social media challenges and strategies in India. Though uh, uh, Amit Kumar sir has already touched all the fields, still as I have prepared the presentation I'm presenting here. Uh, first of all, uh, in the introduction, I want to uh, say that uh, whenever internet was in, in, uh, introduced. It was a vital platform for delivering digital contents like movies, music, and news software, etc. And it reached globally, and thus we, we were able to Hello. instantly. One minute. So, Smita, please uh, stick up to the time and uh, try to uh, ignore some slide okay, okay. and maintain the time. Okay. okay. So, it is different after that. Okay. So, we give you five minutes. Just uh, let me know. And it's instantaneously uh, delivered uh, each any part of the world. And in case of the, uh, the rise of social media was transforming our means of communication by providing instant communication, it uh, helped to publish and publicize almost anything and everything. And in addition, I want to say that social media provides also marketing opportunities for instant mass publication of intellectual property contents, including everything from tweets, photos, blogs, and links to contents. And all of you know that what is intellectual property, and Amit Sarah also uh, said everything. Uh, so uh, it's, it is the intellectual property uh, clears that if someone creates something by using his human intellect that has never been created before, then the creator is the owner of that creation and has all the rights of that creation and is legally protected. Thus, the intellectual property is the product of the human intellect, including creative concepts, inventions, industrial models, trademarks, songs, literature, everything. Everything it is uh, uh, created by the human intellect is uh, the creation of the creator and is the right of the creator. And now the intellectual property rights. And it is it does not differ from any other property rights. Whenever we uh, have any property, we have the right to uh, enjoy uh, the benefits of that. And intellectual property rights also have the benefit, uh, also have uh, the creator have the benefit completely uh, the rights for the benefits of the intellectual product 
which was initially an idea that developed and crystallized. Creators of intellectual works are protected by these rights and he, can, he or she who, who is the creator can legally sue them and force them to stop and compensate for any of the damages. Now types of the intellectual properties, there are various types of intellectual property. In, uh, in academics, we uh, follow the copyright and in other cases, uh, such as any inventions, uh, we, uh, any methodologies or something, we have other rights. We have patents, we have copyrights, we have uh, a trademark for signs or names of other identifications, we have trade secrets. So, suppose uh, in uh, Coca-Cola, the formula of the Coca-Cola, it is a trade secret of that company. The industrial design, when a uh, uh, design is made, it is the product of that company and the creator gets the rights for it. These rights are protected by various periods depending on their nature and jurisdiction. Now I am entering the idea of the social media. What is social media? It's a website or computer programs that all allow people to communicate and share information in the internet using a computer or mobile phone. And it is an interactive platform for individuals or to exchange the user generated data. But where, when you are, we are using uh, social media today, we are, we are, there is an amazing ability to share the content instantly. Whenever we get any photo, a beautiful photo, or an inspiration speech, or thoughtful, or educational piece, we immediately share it with the friends without uh, thinking that it is it can be considered as a copyright infringement because sometimes we do not give the credit to that creator or uh, sometimes we don't even know who is the creator. It has been shared so many times that we didn't know who, who is the creator. So it's very, these uh, mounting issues and unanswered questions highlight how to interplay between intellectual property and social media. And it is an emerging area of concern not only to the lawmakers but also to the business owners and consumers. And it is important to remember that social media platforms have different rules and regulations. They have the terms and conditions mentioned in every platform. Every individual platform, they have the terms and conditions mentioned. With new social media platforms and sharing apps becoming more and more popular, the risk of the copyright infringement is getting more uh, than before. Not to mention that social media platforms give the ability to repost, save or uh, share other people's content. When so many options are available, we already forget who is the creator. We uh, get the information and we share the information. We are getting information and sharing the information. So, now the objective of my study is to explore the challenges. Uh, the intellectual property rights in the age of the social media and to identify the strategies for it. And the methodology, methodology is uh, exploratory and uh, it tries to uh, investigate the challenges of intellectual property rights. And the data is gathered from secondary sources, books, papers, news articles, from Google scholars and Google search engines, etc. That means come to findings and conclusions. Um, these are the intellectual property rights already uh, there in the India. Uh, this is the copyright. Please skip this one. And now we are going the challenges. Protection of intellectual property rights is a challenge, uh, which is it is difficult to identify who is legally responsible for any infringement. We, when we share and share the documents, we um, not always know who is the creator. So there is a problem, difficulty in enforcing rights. Social media platforms can make it difficult for right holders to monitor and enforce the rights due to its huge amount of user generated. Every day, day we are creating anything and everything. So everyone, we are, everyone is a creator. So when we create something and share something, not always we are giving any uh, acknowledgement. 
So it's very much difficult to impose rights. User generated content uh, is a major component of social platform, making it difficult for the intellectual property holders to control. And copyright and trademark are not acknowledging anything, uh, any literary work. It's a copyright infringement. And in case of any other signs or logos or something, we are using, uh, if we do not give any, uh, we do not take any permission or give any acknowledgement, it, it is also an infringement. And jurisdictional cha challenges also are there because worldwide is. Uh, Social media platforms, uh, what is a, it's a worldwide nature and every uh, country has individual rules according to their uh, intellectual property rights. And in case of fair use also, the copyright, we do not know, uh, suppose in case of, uh, in the COVID situations, many of the literary works are shared and reshared in many ways. But how much it is uh, used for fair, uh, it is fairly used, it is, it is not exercise or control and how it is, uh, how the content is utilized, it is not no. So, uh, some of the intellectual methods are there by which we can uh, stop this uh, infringement. So, these are the uh, these are the methods, and these are the uh, awareness programs we can take. Uh, we have taken, or some have been taken, or we can take for the in case of India. This national IPR uh, policy has been taken for Creative India or Innovative India, and awareness programs. And librarians are, can take a major role in case of this awareness programs from the uh, very school level and uh, to the higher education level. The librarians can aware the uh, students and uh, their users how to use every uh, piece of literature or something to uh, get. To make use of, uh, to make fair use of the literary works. Now I'm concluding that uh, this is a proliferation of social media platforms made it easier to misappropriate or steal its original work by any third party. So there are some uh, measures I said that intellectual properties, enforcement of rights by the government using digital watermarking, copyright uh, protection software like digital management softwares. Like this we can uh, safeguard the intellectual property rights and make the creator get the benefit of all. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Sunda. So I will call upon the name. Uh, next one, Jiyaka. Uh, there is an announcement. We will be having a parallel session in the room number 201. Uh, the participant of that particular session has requested to uh, go there. And that session will be started uh, very shortly. Okay. Thank you very much. Okay. Thank you very much. Uh, next one, uh, I will call up the Jaurava. Are you here? Okay. Okay, you may start, sir. Uh, you have uh, only five minutes to present your paper. So, keep it in mind. Hello. Thank you. 
So, uh, so I'll call up the Arindam Nath. Are you here? Please come and present you. You have uh, five years time. Okay. Give me one now. Number of public, total number of publications. 
first point is that uh, the configuration having in the DOI, digital option that is required and without view. Okay. Second that is that data set is there. I have to create a gray language to recording the data from first to hundred. So number of word is constant, number of word is then the data part of the data extraction, we have to write a, the Gray language in the JSON format. So we can get the data. Um, for example, handle pass JSON is OA, then it will be given if it is open access or not. But here, true or false, then um, handle pass JSON, open access status. Uh, it may be gold, it may be green, but what do I do? Then, um, uh, so after fetching the data, we can get this kind of table. Then I have given as in bar bar chart diagram, year wise, then license wise, and then analysis. We can get that. Out of 62,709 uh, publication, 26,416 uh, are open, and gold one is the free And university contribution, University of Dhaka has the highest number of OA publication. And licensing type is uh, CCBY is the highest, and yearly growth is. Uh, we can get uh, 28.11 in 2019 to 48% uh, in 2023 uh, up to June. Challenges and opportunities. The strategy recommendation formulates the uh, APR OA policy. The university should distribute and promote OA to increase visibility, impact, and research output. Infrastructure in this uh, way, repository uh, and the retail library can support the archiving of wide dimension. Thank you, Thank you uh, Next uh, presenter, the previous one, uh, Geo Government. Uh, is it your PPT is ready? Is your PPT ready? So, yes, so Jiao Rahman, uh, this topic of presentation is fundamental of our year, but it's just all for you. So, you have five minutes slots for me. So, sir, I have changed my topic. You have already changed your topics. Okay, okay go on. Good afternoon, everyone. I would like to thank Universal DT and my teacher, Dr. Udi Kloy, for providing me with this opportunity. And I would also like to thank uh, Mahapatra sir, Prabhu sir, and Omit Kumar sir. So, I am the topic T in Alachana Kotejaji, she was the awareness of students on digital rights that is only. So, we can have a lot of I mean, you know, so the game is also for the man. You know, okay, you can't hear the digital rights management. Digital rights management is a job for actor, creator, job for actor content with great money. So, she content for actor virtual law. Jasha, 
technology oriented copyright material ki kibhabe byabohar kora hobe seta control kora to ei kichu advantages ache jeta hocche protection against piracy revenue generation user can control over distribution of the content डेटा पालिश अभी क्या है पंचेशन स्टूडेंट के लिए एक डेटा को लगाने को लेकिन जो रिसर्चर के लिए पंचेशन स्टूडेंट का डेटा वो इतनी बहुत ही नापसंद हो और बड़ों बोलते कि लाइन बीसी स्टूडेंट का डेटा ये पास होगा तो बातें क्या हैं जिकता कुछ लोग आईपीएल में डीआर की शेडोसों में ज আ সেগুলোকে কিভাবে তারা ম্যানেজ করে এই বিষয়গুলো দিন আমি বাতে জিজ্ঞাসা করেছিলাম তো সেখান থেকে তারপরে আমি যেটা জানতে পেরেছি তার মধ্যে 50% আইপিআর সম্বন্ধে কিছু ধারণা রাখে এবং 60% স্টুডেন্ট ক্রিয়েটিভ কমন্স বা স্ট্যান্ডার্ড লাইসেন্স সম্বন্ধে কোনো ধারণা রাখে না তারা জানে না এই জিনিসটা কি এখানে আমি কিছু আইচার ডেটা এখানে দিয়েছি उचित এটা হলো কথা আগে বলছি যে জিআরএম ব্যাপারটাকে একটু যা আমাদের এডুকেশনাল কন্টেন্ট তৈরি হবে সেই ক্ষেত্রে আমাদের একটু ব্যারিয়ার থাকে কম করা উচিত এবং এবং কন্টেন্ট ক্রিয়েটরদের একটা প্রাপ প্রাইসিং স্ট্রাকচার থাকা উচিত যেখানে কম খরচে স্টুডেন্টসরা সেটাকে ইউজ করতে পারে এবং অথরিটিসকে ইন্টেলেকচুয়াল প্রপার্টি রাইট এবং ক্রিয়েটিভ কমন্স আরো বেশি করে অ্যাওয়ারনেস বাড়াতে হবে যাতে জনসাধারণের মধ্যে এই জিনিসটা বেশি ভাবে পৌঁছে তো এই ভাবেই আমরা ডিআরএম কে আরো ভালোভাবে মানুষের কাছে পৌঁছাতে পারবো এবং এর সাথে সাথে আমরা কনটেন্ট ক্রিয়েটর যারা তাদেরকে আমরা সেই রাইটটা দিতে পারবো সো थैंक यू वेरी मच Thank you, dear government. Uh, next, uh, I will call upon the name of Sunita Sah. Please, Sunita Sah is the project staff in the Alai Central Library, Alai Ji Kharapu. Um, her title is analyzing the status of digital repositories that use this space in India. The study based on open geo. We have five minutes, so you will be talking about the presentation. Objective of the study. This study to assess the status of digital digital repositories in India. 
media where identify and analyze the various types of content, developing the strategic digital marketing study, the accessibility of digital tooling and user interface, adoption of digital people. Let's explore the methodology behind this study. In this study, quantitative research was applied and the data was collected from open source. We found 58 Indian repositories using this page. Collected data including repository creation details, subject categories, interface, and other types of data was analyzed using Microsoft Excel. This figure shows year of creation of repositories. Where we find user business started in India from 2005 as per record. Modern English was seen between 2006 to 2009. And the following year, 2012, 14, and 17 shows fluctuation. Overall change shows positive growth of adoption of this. This this slide shows the proportion of statewide distribution of repositories based on institution size. While we found the Maharashtra, Karnataka, Nizhi, and Gujarat were the leading contribution, and the business is mostly used by universities and research institutions. Here, this shows content type. While journal articles, pieces, and dissertation conference papers are the most common content type, we also can see other types of content across the repository. Let's explore the repository distribution by size. We can see science, technology are the top subjects. On the other hand, engineering and health and medicine, social science, humanities, arts, and mathematics are made with the conclusion. Now, this is one of the most significant parts of the study. We found 50% of the repository is required opening directly, while the other 50% did not. We try to find out the potential use behind this, which are broken in separate server errors, name and list change. Available display user interface in the repository is required identified which are JSP UI, SMS UI, Angular, and some are well known. We acknowledge some potential limitations such as missing repositories, which means there could be more repositories yet to be listed on open Google. As time passes, the data might be changed. Some repositories were not found. However, this study results contribute key insight about the status. Our study has implication in solution. Reflection more attention for input services, regular updates to crucial, adoption of new technology. In few repositories shows the academic aspects. For the process of content, we exert need consistency. Highlights more efforts towards data sets, preservation, and safe platform for future resolution. Already been told about the landscape and the status of this space based repositories in India, geographical institutions, practical implications for academic communities and these professionals area for focus, which might be help shaping better in the services. That's it from my end, and thank you for yes. of your time and attention. Thank you. Uh, any uh, question? Now open to platform. So no question? Uh, thank you. Thank you. So, uh, uh, today we had this uh, seventh session, technical session of this two-day seminar and with my co-chair uh, Dr. Prabhupada Karke and uh, invited speaker Dr. Amit Kumar. Amit Kumar, uh, actually you, you know that uh, after the lunch session, generally you will feel sleepy, but uh, Amit Kumar has awakened us uh, throughout the session, it was very interactive and uh, uh, he has given a very good uh, information to us by sending on the IPR and social media, followed by four presentations. Uh, and all the four presentations were very related to the theme and was useful. So I extend my thanks on behalf of my co-chair uh, to Universal Briefing and uh, College, Biajo Memorial College and Open Access Bangladesh for giving us the opportunity to uh, chair the session along with my co-chair and uh, invited speaker, Amit Kumar. Thank you very much.
Thank you, sir. Now is the time to uh, give presentation to our, to our beloved presenters. So uh, we are requesting to chairperson and co-chairperson to uh, present pen drive to our presenter. All the presenters are requested to come forward. Zia or Roma? Or you don't not? Shongita Shah. Shushmita Bushu Sharkar. Thank you, sir. Thank you for nicely handling the session. Thank you. Now we will uh, start our next technical session, technical session 8. Mita uh, Kamari will continue the session. We have some sessions. Now we are going to start technical session A and the theme of session B idea and a traditional knowledge. Now I would like to request our joint chairperson, Dr. Koisha Porter, to come on the dais and have your time. He gave lectures and organized daily refreshment courses, orientation program, course of methodology, workshop training, teaching learning evaluation program, soft skill development program, preparing and preparation program, etc. He has attended several seminar conferences and presented many papers. He has published in several journals, conferences, topics, and two chapters. We are also present to have Professor Moses Kumar Naga with, with us. I would like to request Professor Naga to come on the dais and take your son. Professor Moses Kramnaga is the IHOB of the Department of Library and Information Science, now Stanford University, Ceylon. I would like to request our volunteers to felicitate Dr. Kurenshi Kramnaga, Professor Department of Library and Information Science, University of
using information with Tracer as the main component. We are trying to spread out the green support profession. Yesterday, even Mr. Barber was saying that our profession, you know, we need to strengthen and we need to spread out. So one of the areas of research that we do is we go to the uh, villages and the rural areas, especially. Of course, even in the urban areas, we uh, try to involve the you know, BPL families. But then, uh, by the grace of the living God, uh, uh, especially, in Meghalaya, where I'm working, BPL families are very rare. Who does? 300, um, also, yeah, yeah. But it's uh, the kind of uh, place is, uh, where I'm working is mostly rural, rural base. It doesn't mean that the people are you know, barbaric and so on, but location and other aspects of the looking for, and I say rural. But when you come and visit us, even in the remote villages, people are very hospitable, and very friendly, and they will protect you. So you don't worry about them. Okay, you try to visit strong people and you don't know this is that. So uh, what we try to do is based on information literacy, using information literacy as a main component, uh, we try to uh, help the rural people. Like for example, one area of research which we do research and we do masters, dissertation uh, level, PhD level is we try to collect all the information, assess them properly, whatever information related to whatever the development programs announced and announced by the most sensitive government, sensitive government, especially the central government. The central government has a lot of development programs meant for the rural areas. But in reality, you see, you find that the beneficiaries are not really getting benefits. But in the success story on the website, you find that it's 100%, 100% mistake. But then when we do the reality check, we say that even the villagers are not even aware okay, about getting benefited. So that is, a, uh, that is a very big challenge in our profession. So we started doing research, we carry the information to the villagers, tell them what is all about this project, how they can get aware of this, the benefits of the project, and how do you ensure that you get the hundred percent benefit? We talk about the Berlin of India, of talking about this, talking about the direct benefit transfer. But that also doesn't really fix the reality. They might, they might have opened the bank account, right? But the money doesn't reach the village. That is our finding. Somewhere in between, even village level leaders, they corrupt you. Know, it's not only the politicians, the bureaucrats, or the higher level. Uh, the the uh, not development officer, BDO, the minister, minister, and even up to the Delhi ministry, 10% are. All these uh, we have to trace. So we have a lot of data on that. So what we do is we guide the, the villagers, we carry the information, easy resource for us, we're doing without any you know, finance from other uh, sources. We spend in our own pockets, especially those who are doing a get yeah, they are good, they are for them. Sometimes we also we pull in from our salary. So that but then the, see, spending money is another thing. That, the kind of joy that we derive out of our know, resource when the villagers are benefited, when they are, you see, the money which we spend, we don't really uh, bother much. That doesn't mean that we are rich people, right? Coming here is sponsored by also UN and the team. <laughs> we need a lot of money, but still, there are ways and means where we can even spare and where it is a bit useful for the society. So, uh, we've been doing this for about uh, one decade or so now. And we have come to get a lot of uh, feedback and feedback. And so one of the, you know, uh, examples is like Mamba Mandi, Marigam, 
Under the National Rural Employment Guarantee Act, that is 100 days minimum, 100 days. So it depends on the states. I don't know exactly what is the labor rate in West Bengal, but in Meghalaya it's 156 right now. I think they might have revised or that was 2018 or that is a research. So 156. Into 100, they're supposed to get around 15,600. Those were really poor villagers, the rural poor people. But then, in reality, when we uh, go to the villages and check, you see the maximum is 3,000, 4,000 in lump sum. Whereas that 10,000, 11,000, 12,000 is not perhaps a sum that uh, Mahatma Gandhi, you know, national rural employment government, is a maximum of corruption is going on. Every step, you will find him, check the data, Google, So, you see, the, we found that. But after the interrogation of a resource program, we drive them, we go to the, there are many other programs to be involved in. Just that example, you see, we, Go and tell the villagers, this is what you're supposed to get. This is how you're supposed to get. So after two years of interrogation, guiding the villagers for three years maximum, because the resource holders cannot spend their whole lifetime, minimum we fight with the villagers. The result is uh, very impressive. From 3,000 to 5,000 maximum, they started getting at least 12,000, 13,000, because we checked every level. So the kind of benefit that they got. So that kind of resource we, we call it a, an impact of information or tracy on the rural development programs and so Now one of the resource scholars he got a PhD in 2018 for that he's working in our university as an information scientist. That particular area with this uh, the uh, villagers of that particular area where he did his PhD research. Now they are telling him to come and contest the election. <laughs> they said they are going to give solid. They won't allow any other candidate to go against him. So uh, he's planning to contest that in 2018. They will ask the election will be held in 2028. So that is another side of the story. So coming to that, uh, relating to that now, when we come to the, this traditional uh, knowledge, traditional knowledge is a very wide area. So we are specializing in medicinal practices, right? traditional outdoor medicinal practices. We're talking a little bit of that. And then IPR. So the question is, um, of course, uh, don't worry, I have a long uh, video, I mean, PPT presentation prepared, but I'm not going to read out line by line, or I'm not going to present slide by slide. Just, just is, uh, you know, any, so many things are there. But then I have to prepare like this to show that for so I was in great purpose, I started showing that I did something. Some assignment, right? But then for our discussion, you see, the question is I'm not going to talk about IPR, what is IPR, what is the scope of IPR, what are the different types of so that is not necessary because many people have taught this a while ago, also in the world, have taught so many things and then other research uh, paper presenters also. Yesterday, of course, I missed some uh, very important sections because we went to the National Library for Qatar, this is at the same time, so uh, we couldn't attend so many other programs, so I paid in Papa Trans for the time. He has forwarded to me, so I did that. So uh, what we are trying to say here is that, you see, we started uh, doing research, so this slide, Documentation, for example. 
Any people who doesn't want to consider documentation as a research, documentation will be included in the scientific breakthrough and very, very important research in the PC lab that was so what we do is we also started taking up uh, you know, another area of research. We have master's level dissertation starting from there, PhD level, you know, anything research we started doing on documentation on uh, traditional medicinal uh, practices in Northeast. So far we have been able to pass uh, four states now. Nagaland, Manipur, and then Assam, and then Meghalaya. We're trying to go to another other states, which is the ones of the days, and then Tripura, Mizoram, and Shikim. Maybe it's Maharashtra, or Fred, and Malda, and Shikim. We can also start so, so far, we we go to the villagers. We cannot call all states, for example. Even in uh, Assam, Assam is a very big so we have originally two blocks. One block is uh, this uh, cardiomon issue. There, you know, the number of villagers is more than uh, almost 400 villagers are there. So uh, we try to identify how many traditional medicinal practitioners are there. So all of 400 around, we could find uh, 137 practitioners, traditional uh, medicinal, herbal, traditional herbal medicinal practitioners. So we we identify who are the practitioners and then we go and meet them. It is very difficult to convince them to. Because they don't want to share the secrets, and uh, they also they have a uh, you know superstition. What did their religious believe? If they share with us the knowledge, the you know the power goes away, the gift goes away. That is what they believe. But then uh, we have to slowly convince them that if any benefit comes out of this, we are going to share with them, we're going to include their names. So then slowly they open up. So uh, out of uh, 127 practitioners, for example, I'm giving the example of one of the blocks in the whole in uh, You see, we have uh, identified, we have uh, compiled and documented around 900 something medicinal plants. So it's a huge uh, wealth of uh, knowledge. I'll, I'll go to the, uh, come to the higher aspect. Last, how do we bring this uh, our traditional knowledge into the higher domain in order to ensure that the traditional knowledge, their expertise is protected, documented, and so on. That is one example. Another example is in Manipur, Nagaland. We have identified more than 600 medicinal plants. Even in Meghalaya, we are able to identify another 600 medicinal plants so far. This, uh, we are taking not the whole state, but a few, a few villages under one block. That in another district of Assam, which is called Udalguri district, so we can live in the We are also taking, we have also taken out the documentation works on traditional and medicinal practices. Uh, it is a cross cultural kind of practice because uh, multiple communities live there. Not just Assamis, the Bihari's are there, and then uh, Nepalis are there. Borrows, Trans, and then so four five communities. But it is very uh, interesting. The same medicinal plant, another community may be using it for different sicknesses. Another community, the same medicinal plant, they are using it for other types of sicknesses. So uh, it is very interesting. So this kind of uh, work we are doing.
Now, uh, so uh, what is traditional plan and all? I leave you to this. Feedback in demand is very important in our 
population. So we organize, we collect, we organize, we preserve, we store, and then we communicate. But all those knowledge information which we are working is uh, the real, when it comes to the real content, the original content of the information and knowledge, our role is uh, almost new, or maybe new, isn't it? Because we are dealing with the works which people have, other people have done, so research, how to work with people, not necessarily. So what I, maybe I'm getting older by now, I know, so I started thinking a little, you know, <laughs> I was thinking these last few, you know, months, days, years, that we also can be part of the original, you know, content creator, or knowledge creator, right? So one of the ways and means, the best ways and means is a true documentation. For example, we are talking about uh, documentation of uh, traditional herbal medicinal practices. So by involving the traditional practices, we go there, we observe, we knock them down step by step systematically. So we are also part of it. They, but at the same time, they are also part of it because they get the knowledge. We are the one who will record, document, so we also can get, get a equal credit 50 50. So, when these uh, practices are documented, or maybe just uh, yeah, when the, these traditional or medicinal practices are documented. Maybe we can uh, uh, publish it first, so we can uh, copyright it, right? Copyright can be the first step. So now, once it is uh, copyrighted, maybe our, you know, practice, practitioner also will get equipment and will get benefit if any royalty or other things happens. Maybe other, you know, uh, patenting and all those things can come later on. So this is uh, what we are trying to do. So this is what we mean to say by uh, uh, this integrating traditional uh, herbal medicinal practice. So uh, but then uh, it is not that easy. It is not that easy. We have to involve the practitioners and we have to understand the tradition, the beliefs, their system, the custom, you know, beliefs, religious beliefs, right? It's not just uh, tweet very deep. It's not it's not convincing, but uh, it takes time to convince them, but it works. I'm telling all of you from practical experience. In the beginning of the research, people even don't want to recognize. But slowly, you see, when they come to know our intention, that there is some kind of uh, good intention in us and that they are going to get some kind of benefit. So, uh, challenges will be there, but uh, it's okay, no problem, we need to face. And then we also need to you know, try to uh, pursue some kind of, uh, they call it shoe generic system established a two generous legal system. Now in 2019, in the National Law University of uh, Assam, that is in Guwati, there was a seminar on traditional indigenous knowledge, protection of indigenous law. So even though it was organized by the legal one and the most university relating to legal matter, it just sent a paper on the national laws. They readily agreed and they have come to us and gave us almost one hour because law and then library information science, maybe they are curious. So we talk about that and then uh, there are so many lawyers and retired judges, they all came and said that there is no legal system so far in order to protect these traditional knowledge, even though they have just this uh, traditional knowledge to library. Legal protection is a little bad. Maybe name, patenting the name and tamari, all this are very few, right? But the 
thousands of medicinal plants. This uh, we need to tap them, document them, and then get it published to all professionals. And you know, join authors, it. we will uh, give the name also. So publish it, copyright it, and then we can protect it. And then you know, we can go for patent and some and then you know we can also um, go for other processes. A few things are uh, on the GF tag. Also, the whole was showing up. Some of them. And then even in Assam. Mungasil. Some guys. Some GF tag. But these are just few of them. But uh, when it comes to medicinal, traditional medicinal plants, Thousands of medicinal plants that the traditional practitioners are using, and it is uh, very helpful. So, uh, this traditional knowledge is being passed on from generation to generation in the oral kind of method. And the oral kind of method is not so effective now because, uh, you know, with the modernization of the education system. And the children got this because so they don't want to remain in the old parents' traditional practices, right? So when the knowledge holder died, the knowledge also died. And that's the center of the grace system. So that's why we, we need to go to intensive and extensive way of documenting the traditional rich, traditional wisdom, knowledge. So we are doing that. Now, uh, so I'm not going to go into all these details. So this is uh, in conclusion, this is what I want to do. That's why this, uh, our professional social responsibility Library information profession is really very crucial actually. Instead of uh, you know using and handling people's uh, outputs of people's research and knowledge, of course that is also very part of a uh, very important part of a library profession. We also can become knowledge creators. Why don't we also create knowledge in partnership with the traditional knowledge holders? That is the challenge that I just want to the main thing, the main challenge is that I show to us. Maybe we can collaborate also. And then in fact, uh, the one thing is by the grace of the living God, I have never taken a single tablet allopathic medicine for my BP, high BP, or even my sugar. But I take uh, uh, my BP is only a little bit on the rise. Then I take some leaves and it works. The sugar, of course, was very so far, but it's under control. But there are lots of uh, sugar, you know, medicinal plants. Although there is a story in Kokuni. One story, let me tell you a story of the man. Okay, now my friend, let me give you some more. Last one. Um, one gentleman from Nagaland, who for months, he was a well to do gentleman. He was a sugar problem. Then uh, he Come to know that in China, so herbal medicine is able to cure, not just reduce. So he went to China, stayed there for a month. He spent a lot of money, no serious currency, it's much higher than Indian currency. He spent lots, he went to lots. Then uh, his sugar was. Uh, Control and then the, the Chinese the, the practitioner gave him a huge bundle of uh, herbs, plants, medicinal plants. And we speak 
shown it uh, in the uh, common name is uh, Chinese uh, not wheat. This is a uh, botanical name is polygonum. Polygonum. So, so he was carrying like this. The one I brought. Uh, he was carrying like this. And then he brings the winners. And then the one old lady shows up. The gentleman carrying the farm. And then he asked him, Son, what are you carrying? I brought medicine from China. Oh, you went to China to collect this. This uh, on the roadside, everywhere we find, and we feed this to the pigs. And then uh, the gentleman was quite shocked. Educated person. He was there on uh, his doorstep, but then went all the way to China. So later on, he, that, that is a uh, true story. So he started in copies, in the newspaper also, and then he uploaded it in the Facebook and went viral also. And then, so now people are taking that. Chinese not me. I think whether here in Calcutta we may not find because uh, they usually get in uh, all places. So, uh, from time to time, we ask you know, our family members from the village, same to Shilong, so we can enjoy that. This is a very good education that, that really keeps sugar. And so, my boss friend, I don't have sugar problem. And the uh, blood pressure problem, there is a plan. We grow it in the garden in Shilong. So this is Shilong, I gave you this. We brought up to the village. They are using that. So we are trying to involve our friend here in the only to survey of Ida. We go together and we try to experiment in the laboratory, try to find out the medicinal and the chemical properties and then that. So these are the things we are doing. So now uh, in order to bring our traditional knowledge under the purview, protection of IPR, we can do a lot. Why should we just uh, keep working for other people, right? Because that is really important. I'm not saying that you start, uh, you stop collecting and then organizing and that a library will be closed down. No. But we also can contribute knowledge readers, contemporary knowledge readers. And so one area is documentation, which we are also doing, maybe uh, slowly, slowly, with the cooperation of professional colleagues across the country. We are saying Sultan is a very nice gentleman, always cheerful, smiling, friendly. He's a very good uh, kind of uh, as the world, right? network. So we all can uh, uh, continue together. So uh, this is what I just uh, want to say something. I mean, briefly, there are many things we can talk, but then I uh, see the time is also limited. Luckily, I came after the project share out the crowd so that others don't sleep. <laughs> so I think uh, we should stop here. <laughs> With the permission of uh, uh, Professor Udai, I have heard the dinner. <laughs> nice dinner. <laughs> thank you so much. Thank you, sir. thank you. So thank you, Professor Moses Naya. <laughs> So, in this last session, we have reached at the eighth technical session, and this session is basically idea and traditional knowledge. So, in this session, we have our resource person, Professor Moses Mark Nara. He presented his paper, the paper that is safeguarding traditional knowledge. Integrating traditional herbal medicine of Northeast India into IPL. So, from these two days, we learned different facets 
but this is totally different and it is related to traditional knowledge and this paper is defined very carefully the traditional knowledge which is the traditional medicines so medicinal plants so in this is it he elaborately very lucidly defines his total work i think he what and in his it may be in this scholars or maybe but he presently very lucidly when he starts and when he ends we can understand because very lucidly he define all the matters within a few lines how we make of the documentations of his traditional plans for future aspects he his main objectives is papers to documentation because we know that traditional medicines are going practice in the villages but the that persons cannot reveal that they, they cannot want to tell the process the name of the medicines actually these the name of the medicine it may be the, the scientific name but they don't know the actual scientific name but they define their own language same medicine plant maybe can see in the different places in different names and also he define that the same medicinal plant may be used in different illness so we have to document all the documentation all the medicinal plants for future preservation thank you sir for your nice presentations now in this session there are few papers i think one or two presenters are there so omni khalla is there yes sir yeah and another is no no more only one thing sir so जी because i am also a library professional mm -hmm. and second can why can't we do the patent of those uh, those uh, leaves and these things because that would be really great for for if you are like yeah. me i am spending thousands of rupees number mm -hmm. one number two last 12 years or 13 years i am taking medicine for all these things yes <laughs> thank you for the uh, say strengthening our discussion Well, uh, you see, we are also still in the process. That's why we want to, you know, we want to uh, get it published. In our PhD thesis, we just give ten or twenty percent medicinal plants. Those will be include everything in the thesis will be like this. Because every uh, medicinal plant, we give the detailed name of the plant, local botanical. Many of them doesn't have botanical name also. Many are not identified, so then the process, the methodology, the process. So one medicinal plant can uh, cover at least minimum one page. So if we have to include thousands of I mean seven, eight, eight hundred medicinal pages, okay, like this literature review, literature. So we are just with the few. So right now, uh, since we are also not expert in that. We have not really a scientifically tested, documented. We are just documenting what people are doing. So now uh, that uh, plan for high BP, this I'm taking, is also the local name is there, but botanically we have not identified. That is the one which we want to actually. Sent to the botanical survey, the laboratory. We are is this still under the process. So once it comes out, then the scientific name plus uh, chemical components, medicinal components, content in it will be identified, and then we can go back to it. So people are working on that. Nobody is working now. We are. We are trying. We are planning. Okay. 
I was one of my resource scholars, I mean one of our resource scholars working under my guidance. She is working, she's a library professor, she is working in botanical survey of India. She was working. So the director is a friend, so we are still in the process because we are waiting for the flowering uh, uh, because they need arborium. Deep salon cannot so we call it the harbor. Maybe in the year's time, hopefully, it come. Another medicinal plant for sugar, of course, sugar, I don't have to think so. But people are taking is uh, they, they take the leaf, boil it, and just uh, put it down and drink blue water morning, evening. So, People who have sugar problem, they have sugar problem in jail. So that one, I can send you the picture. Yeah. And then, uh, I don't know whether you will grow here or not. It can grow. It grows uh, very fast. We can put it in a flower for this and that. So what we do is, uh, whoever comes from Kolkata, so back, uh, yeah, we are the the also the yeah. And, um, yeah. Yeah. So maybe we can, uh, I will try to go in a small box, young plant, and then I send it to you. Can hear. So that what they do is they pluck out the leaves, burn it, put it on the leaf. It's not on the whole daily, daily basis. So those are the people. But uh, for BP, uh, uh, my BP also goes to five or with the eggs, like 80 to 95 dollars, and then uh, you know, 100 or 200. So when I take that meals, especially as a non vet so I eat meat. <laughs> Mutton this time I really enjoy so you think that they put your leaves in the BP in this. So that kind of person, people were not the scientists, right? So just like your profession. So what I'm trying to say is that we'll document those processes, we'll uh, take also and we'll publish it. And then uh, go for copyright. That is the first step. And then you can be the next. Thank you. Thank you. So now, now the technical sessions for painting your papers. This paper is a rule of geographical indicator indications in rural development and economic growth of West Bengal. Geographical indication Amoniacta beside the Kono Bogoli, Polimondole, the Horin Dole, Vojala, Kono Potha, Basika, Bau, also be sixty one. Sera Dudu Botan in the Hawaii, actor the Samaji Kabe, I at the Aibato, but সরকারে যে সরকার ভারত সরকারের স্বীকৃতি প্রদান সংস্থা আছে তারা জিওগ্রাফিক্যাল ইন্ডিকেশন ট্যাগ এটা প্রদান করে এবং এর দ্বারা কি হয় যেখানেই যে ওই প্রোডাক্টটি উৎপাদন হোক না কেন তার নামকরণ ওইটাই রাখতে হবে সেটা পৃথিবীর যে প্রান্তেই হবে কিন্তু নাম তার বেশি তার বাইরে অন্য কিছু করা যাবে না এর দ্বারা আমাদের যেটা হয় সেটা হচ্ছে ট্র্যাডিশনাল নলেজকে আমরা প্রোডাকশন করতে পারি প্রোডাক্ট রেপুটেশন বজায় থাকে রুরাল ডেভেলপমেন্ট অর্থাৎ একেবারে প্রত্যন্ত অঞ্চল থেকে মাদুরকাটি 
মাদুর কাঠি যে অঞ্চল থেকে উঠে এসেছিল সেই অঞ্চলের মানুষদের কিভাবে উৎকর্ষ করা যায় এবং তার ভিত্তিতে মানুষ কিভাবে আরো প্রসিদ্ধ হতে পারে সেই বিষয়ে কাজকর্ম করা গেছে এবং সব থেকে বড় যে জায়গাটা তৈরি হয়েছিল এর দ্বারা কি কি হতে পারে সেটা হচ্ছে কালচারাল ডেভেলপমেন্ট থাকতে পারে ইকোনমিক গ্রোথ থাকতে পারে একটা কর্মসংস্থানের সুযোগ বা বিকল্প প্রথা বা কর্মসংস্থানের জায়গা তৈরি হতে পারে এবং সরকারি পদ্ধতি তো স্বীকৃত আসতেই পারে আর কিছু হয় যেটা শিক্ষাগত উৎকর্ষ না অর্থাৎ এই বিষয়টাকে আরো যদি উৎকর্ষ করা যেতে পারে তার ভিত্তিতে কি কি হতে পারে যেমন संस्था
Good evening, everybody. Thank you, Smita. Now we are going to start our valedictory session. We are delighted to have with us our honorable dignitary, Professor Amitabh Dutta, Pro Vice Chancellor at Chandapur University, Kolkata, for addressing the valedictory session. We are honored to have with us a distinguished dignitary, Professor Udan Bhattacharya, Department of Library and Information Science, Jadapur University, also the President of Universal Briefing and the Director of this International Seminar. Now I request Professor Dutta and our respected Professor Bhattacharya sir to kindly occupy their seat on the tires. I would like to take this occasion uh, to extend an invitation to a well-known figure in the Library and Information Science field, Dr. Ranjan Shamanto, General Secretary of Universal Briefing and Librarian at Nagawali Kanchu Mahavidalaya, Kolkata, to occupy the seat on the dais. I would like to take the opportunity to invite the renowned personality in the field of library and information science, Dr. Shomen Mondol, librarian at Prashanta Chandra Mohalanamish Mohavidalai, Kolkata, and the Rapporteur General of this international seminar. Also, I would like to request the distinguished personality in the field of library and information science, Dr. Shopon Khan. Joint Secretary at Universal Briefing and Librarian at Norishimho Dutta College, Howrah, to occupy the seat on the dais. May I now request, uh, sorry, I would like to request Dr. Obhi Roy, Organizing Secretary of this seminar and Librarian at Pirojo Memorial College, Raja Ghat, Kolkata, to occupy the seat on the dais. For a special announcement, I would like to call Dr. Mimai Chat Shaha, the acting university librarian at Vishwa Bharati Shantini Ketan, to occupy the seat on the tires. I would like to invite Dr. Nimai Chat Shaha for the special announcement. So please. Uh, let me at the very outset on behalf of the participants as well as invited guests to extend my deep regards and sense of hope the entire team of Universal Briefing, led by Professor Rudan Bhattacharya sir, for organizing such a critic free, negative free, grand success event today, which is on the eve of benedict session. And this is not the announcement, this is the introduction of the announcement. Then, what is the announcement? Announcement is that I think those who are present over here will not be disagreed with me if this August occasion for the next year is being jointly organized by Universal Briefing and Mr. Bhattacharya Network. One of the prestigious campus of Indian abroad. Not only that, last year we have our new feather by excellence of UNESCO, the first, first and only world living heritage campus. So you all are welcome there to enjoy with us and have a test whether the Shorty Library Network team will come around to compete with the Universal Briefing team 
and how can I go success of success with success square? <laughs> only one thing, since I'm announcing it over here, we put this August together here. As you know, at present, we do not have the permanent administration in our university. Neither in the chair of vice chancellor, neither in the chair of register. As a matter of fact, we have our primary discussion along with the universal briefing and with my teammates. And with the primary, primary discussion with the university, temporary administration. And my present vice chancellor advised me, Dr. Saha, you please place your formal, uh, formal proposal after arrival of the new vice chancellor. Because if I approve these things, but when the vice chancellor will come, I may not be in the chair. So if he is not agreeing with my approved proposal, my prestige will come and you will be under trouble. So please wait and you just declare this message to the August gathering so that they will fail because everyone will belongs to academic community. So if that kind of threats will not come, of course, this world is committed to organize this event next year or end of this year at the resort. Thank you very much. Thank you, sir. We are indeed honored and privileged to welcome Professor Amitabha Datta on the dais. Professor uh, Datta, Pro Vice Chancellor at Chandapur University, also the Professor of the Department of Power Engineering, Chandapur University, Solni Campus, Kolkata. He has done Bachelor of Engineering and Masters of Engineering from Chandapur University and PhD from IIT Kharagpur. His area of specialization was in thermal engineering, combustion, and energy. Dr. Datta is an active researcher and has completed guidance of 16 PhD theses. He has published more than 100 peer-reviewed research papers in various international journals and also presented and published several papers in national and international conferences. He has also authored one textbook on combustion. Dr. Datta is a recipient of the Alexander von Humboldt Fellowship in Germany. He is a fellow of the Indian National Academy of Engineering, West Bengal Academy of Science and Technology, and International Society of Energy, Environment and Sustainability. I would like to call our volunteers to felicitate Professor Amitabha Datta. I would like to call our volunteers to felicitate Dr. Shoman Mondol. We are now about to begin the valedictory ceremony with the valedictory address of Professor Amitabha Datta. Over to you, sir. Come in this valedictory session and to address the gathering 
I am indeed delighted to be here for in this two-day international seminar on intellectual property rights and conundrum of information managers towards creating an open society. Intellectual property right is one of the very important term that we, at least in the academia, are finding these days. Of course, international property rights or IPR was there for the industry for many years, but at least in India, this IPR, patenting, etc., are something comparatively new. And it is being considered very important in every academic sphere of the, of the country. As we know, in, uh, we have uh, various types of physical properties like land, house, car, or other things. Likewise, intellectual property is also a very important thing which is created by the mind. It can be in the form of scientific and technical inventions, it can be in the form of literary or artistic work, or even in the form of name, or logo, or shape, or decoration of some product. Now, of course, it is very important because you have to protect the, the creation that your mind has developed through years of, I mean, dedicated work. And why is it required to have the intellectual property? It is required to have the intellectual property so that others cannot copy or repeat the same thing which you have created with your dedication. Now, international property can be of various types. It can be of, of uh, through patents. Normally, for scientific and technical inventions, we take patents. But otherwise, intellectual property can also be for trademarks, for registered designs, copyrights, or other know-hows. Now, when you take patent for something, that means the whatever scientific invention you have created that becomes for you at least for some years, normally for 20 years or so. And if someone else have to use it, they have to pay some price for it. And thereby your thing can, cannot get copied freely by everyone. So that is how your right gets protected. And that is why it is very important to have patent and international property right in terms of patent. Likewise, trademarks and registered designs are also equally important to get protected so that others cannot copy it from you. Now, the other thing which is coming up nowadays is the open society. Open access things. In, in case of academics, particularly what I would like to say is that in Indian academia, whatever research we conducted over the years, we earlier used to publish our research in terms of publications either in journals or conferences or maybe in book chapters. Now when you publish your work in a journal, you have, you take copyright of that work. You take copyright of that work, either, either you, your own copyright or the copyright of the journal. I mean, the, 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 the journal takes the copyright of your work. Now, in that case, when others have to use the, or read the work that you have published, they have to buy the journal they have to have the access to the journal. In case of open access publication, it is not so. In case of open access publication, it is free to be available to everyone. And that is why, that is how the, the citation of, the, of your work can be much higher. So that is the advantage of open access society. Now, with the invention of internet as internet is becoming freely available to all of us, open access publications are becoming more and more important. And through open access publication, the citation of your work can get much increased 
compared to the copyrighted one. And that is how it becomes available to a wider circle and I mean it becomes much more humanistic to the society. So this is this is the difference and there is a I mean fine line between the patented or copyrighted work and open access work. I am I, I'm sure that in this international seminar the experts, the keynote speakers and the presenters have deliberated important discussions on patented, patenting, international property right and open access and the conflict or the puzzle or the conundrum between these. I wish that this has a great occasion for all of you and I wish the next conference that you will be having at Vishwabharati University, I'm sure you will have that conference at Vishwabharati, <coughs> will also be a great start, success like this one. Thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you so much for the welcome address, sir. Now, I would like to take the opportunity to invite Dr. Shobhan Mandal, librarian at Prashanta Chandra Mahalanavish Mahavitalai, Kolkata, to deliver his address and brief us about the seminar. Good afternoon, uh, all on the grass and off the grass. Uh, it's a great privilege to stand before you today as a reporter of the uh, international seminar. The international <laughs> topic of intellectual property rights and the conundrum of democracy managers towards creating an open society. Our seminar's theme reflects the pressing needs to navigate this conundrum with foresight and wisdom, striving to strive a delicate balance between fostering innovation and ensuring equitable access to knowledge. As we explore into discussions and debates throughout the last two days, I encourage all of us to keep in mind the future generations that will benefit from the work we do here today. Over the past two days, we have explored into thought-provoking discussions, heard from experts in the field and explored new and innovative ways to solve the conflict between IPR and creation of human society. Dr. Andhan Shamuto, General Secretary, Universal Review, in his welcome speech, briefly discussed about the, the objectives, activities, and journey of Universal Review towards creating the uh, knowledge society. Professor D.P. Sharma, Director General, Raja Ramona Library Foundation, Minister of Culture, Government of India, and inaugurator of this seminar, shared his experience during visit uh, of different libraries all over India and also shared his thought about how library information science professionals and researchers can involve in nation building by doing qualitative research. Professor Prabhakar Roth, former Vice Chancellor, Mizoram University, and Professor and Head, Department of uh, Library Information Science, Mizoram University, and was the chief guest of this senior seminar, very efficiently described the three facets, IPR, information managers, and open society associated with the, uh, with the seminar topic. Professor Roth also shared his view, views about conflict between IPR and open data and how library can provide open access data without compromising IPR. Professor Rodan Bhattacharya, director uh, of the seminar, shared his experience about how universal reading is helping students and scholars to clarify their intellectual thoughts. Uh, Professor Bhattacharya also shared the relevance of the seminar topic in the uh, present year. Dr. Shrikant Mondal, President of the seminar, welcomed uh, all the all to the seminar and also shared his thought about why IPR is needed to protect creators' rights. Professor R.K. Bhatt, Professor, Department of Library and Information Science, University of Delhi, keynote speaker of the seminar, shared his uh, intellectual thoughts about how Ramanathan gives importance to local libraries and also suggests concrete policies and actions should be framed for libraries to properly maintain the documents created during Azadi Ki Amrit Mahotsav. 
Professor Bart also emphasizes uh, about how marketing of the library resources to maximize the uh, resource uh, to maximize the resource utilization, and he also proposes every researcher should have knowledge about academic integrity and professional ethics. The seminar uh, was a great success with eight technical and one parallel session featuring 52 paper presentations. There were eight invited speakers and all are well-known Indian professionals of library and information science. Dr. Shamini Leekar, Professor, Department of Library and Information Science, RTM Nagpur University was invited to speak in the past session and the topic of this uh, session was Creative Commons and Open Licensing. Dr. Leekar shared his experience about uh, she shared our experience about copyright, creative commons, open licensing, different types of license uh, and engagement, etc. The session was shared by Professor Arun Kumar Chakravarti from our DG, RRLA and National Library, Kolkata, and Professor and Head, Department of Library and Information Science, Netai Shua, Sophia University, Kolkata, and co chaired by Dr. Jia Rahman, Associate Professor and Head, Department of Library and Information Science, Ravindra University, Kolkata. Professor Shubhrajit Bhumi, Clinical Director, Academics, Quality and Research Department, PRS Hospital, Kolkata, acted as uh, chairperson of the technical session 2, and the topic of the session was IPR and health industry. He shared uh, some valuable thoughts about the importance of IPR and why it is needed. Uh, he also narrated about how much money is involved in uh, research and development and clinical trial in drug industry. And if not patented, why uh, any company or organization will do the research? Co chair of the session was Dr. Bubalika Bhattacharya Moitro, Assistant Professor, Department of Library and Information Science, University of Calcutta. Uh, Dr. Prabhuti Shingal, Oncologist, PRS Hospital, also shared her thoughts and awareness about A to J about breast cancer in this session. Professor Arti Mohapatra, Professor and Head, Department of uh, Library and Information Science, Tripura University, was invited to speak in the third session, and the topic was government initiatives uh, towards IPR and uh, IPR in India and abroad. Professor Mohapatra covers IPR related to government initiatives in India and abroad. The session was shared by uh, Professor Prabhakar Rao and co-chaired by Dr. Moma Bhoumi, Associate Professor and Head, Department of English, Georgia Mugodha College, Kolkata. Professor Durgashan Kora, Professor uh, Department of Library and Information Science, Vidyasagar University was invited to talk in the session 4, and the topic of this session was IPR Sustainability Issues and Green Revolution. Professor Roth shared his views about IPR and traditional knowledge, importance of IPR, TKDL, biopiracy and misuse of traditional knowledge, etc. This session was shared by Dr. Nimai Chan Sa, librarian and university uh, librarian, and uh, uh, co chaired by Tapun, Dr. Tapun Bari, assistant professor, University of North Bengal. Dr. C.H. Ivan Singh, professor, Department of Library and Information Science, Manipur University, was invited to talk in the session 5, and topic of the session was IPR and the social media. Professor Singh discussed about intellectual property, social media, its challenges, strategies for protection, important uh, areas of research, etc. This uh, session was chaired by Professor Subhadra Kumar Das, Professor, Department of, uh, Department of Library and Information Science, Jadav University, and co chaired by Dr. Sheep Shankar Jana, Associate Professor, Department of Library and Information Science, Kolan University. Dr. Uh, S. Dhanavandan, uh, Deputy Librarian, Central Library of Tamil Nadu was invited to talk in the session 6 and the topic of the discussion uh, of this session was practical aspects of IPR, including case studies, legal proceedings, etc. Dr. Dhanavandar discussed about uh, practical aspects of IPR, process to get patent, trademark, copyright infringement, violation of law, etc. This session was chaired by Dr. C.H. Ivan Singh, Professor, Department of Library and Information Science, Monipur University, and co chaired by Dr. Moses Naga, Professor and Head, Department of Library and Information Science, Mahabharat Hill University, Shiro. Dr. Amit Kumar, Associate Professor and Head, School of Library and Information Science, Central University of Gujarat, was invited to talk in the, uh, to the session 7 and topic of this, this session was IPR and social media context. Dr. Kumar discussed about privacy concerns of social media, authenticity, cyber attack, etc. This session was shared by Professor Arti Mahapatra. 
Professor and uh, Head, Department of Library and Principal Science, Tripura University, and co chaired by Dr. Praveen Karki, Assistant Professor, Department of Library and Information Science, University of Goa. Dr. Moses Mark Naga, Professor and Head, Department of Library and Information Science, Northeastern Guinea University, Shilong, was invited to talk to the session lead, and topic of this session was IPR and the traditional knowledge. Dr. Naga discussed about safeguarding traditional knowledge related to herbal medicinal plan throughout proper documentation and IPR like copyright. He also shared his views about uh, GR, geographical indication. This session was shared by Dr. Politi Mondol, Associate Professor, Department of Library and Professor Science, University of Calcutta. Dr. Monikul Islam, Open Access Bangladesh, was invited to talk in the parallel session 8. He discussed about, uh, about various aspects of IPR in Bangladesh. This session was chaired by Dr. Thapun Bari, Assistant Professor, University of North Bengal. All the sessions were uh, very much interactive in nature, and the chairpersons of media sessions concluded with their valuable observations, comments, and suggestions. In con conclusion, our seminar on intellectual property rights and the quorum of information managers who are creating an open society has been a testament to the power of dialogue collaboration and collective inquiry. Over the course of our discussions, we have navigated the complex training of intellectual property rights with nuance, depth, and a sheer commitment of fostering innovations and openness. Thank you, and may our journey towards a brighter future be marked by continuous collaboration and dialogue. Thank you, Dr. Mondol, for your insightful deliberation. May I now request Dr. Shapon Khan, Joint Secretary at Universal Briefing and Librarian at Narasimha Dutta College, Howrah, for providing a vote of thanks. Thank you. Thank you. Very good afternoon to all of you. We are now at the end of the program. We have successfully finished our massive task by organizing the UK International Seminar on Intellectual Property Rights and the Conundrum of Information Managers who are creating an open society, which is jointly organized by Universal Libri Kolkata, Central Library Review Mundial College Kolkata, and Open Access Bangladesh with financial assistance from. By the Ramon by the Foundation, Ministry of Culture, Government of India, and Indian Council of Social Science Research, Ministry of Education, Government of India, and also supported by VIS Hospital, Hospital and Research Center Limited, and All India Homeopathic Association uh, and Student Association. At the very outset of this very good session, I must express my sincere gratitude to our esteemed. Negrita, Professor Vivi Salva, Director General of the Vajra Mondai Library Foundation, Ministry of Culture of India. We would like to express our sincere gratitude to our Chief Guest, Professor Ruhafar Gaur, former Vice Chancellor, Mizoram University and Mizoram, and the Head Department of Library and Information Science, Mizoram University. We also pay our sincere thanks to our Professor Arti Bhatt, Department of Library and Information Science, University of Delhi, uh, for his inaugural uh, insightful keynote address. We are very grateful to Professor Amitabha Dhatta, who has shared with us at University of Delhi, for his tremendous presence and delivering highly good address. We are very incredibly grateful to Professor Nayan Bhattacharya, the director of the seminar, president of the University of Virginia, former dean, academic council of arts and universities, and professor, department of library and information science, who served as our mentor, philosopher, and all round advisor. We are very grateful to Dr. Shulkar Mandal, president of the seminar, and teacher in charge, Eurasian Manual from the school. 
I would like to continue our sincere gratitude to Dr. Ranjan Shamansu and Shivani Kumar of Ash, Ranjan Dhan, the librarian of Navarajan Shmahitava in Kolkata, and the general secretary of the Universal Division. He really won the name, one or two described all Ranjan Dhan. Our sincere gratitude goes out to the Organizing Secretary of this seminar, Dr. Bodhi Prad, Library and Innovation Mandir College, Adana, Vesh Kamal, for his excellent command and endless activities. We are very thankful to Dr. Patun Dash, Library and Innovation Mandir College of Women, Kolkata, Vesh Kamal, and the Kesarar of Universal Division for his outstanding performance in all the financial activities regarding this seminar. We are very thankful. To the Giant Secretary, Dr. Mudu Singh Ghosh, who are high, a pretty librarian in the Ishwash Penny University Division. We are very thankful to Dr. Shungen Mwande, librarian, Pushantana Mahadavish Mahavid Dalai, Kolkata, East Bengal, and Assistant Secretary of the Universal Pitti and the Rapporteur General of this seminar for the excellent summarization of this seminar. And also, we have our sincere thanks to all the members of this seminar, committee, and committee. We are also thankful to the all business persons, academicians, and other dignitaries directly or indirectly guiding to us to make this seminar success. This seminar has been enlightened by their glorious vision. We are very grateful to our invited speaker, session chairpersons, and co chairpersons. We are also very thankful for all the participants, research scholars, students, and all other participants in this seminar. We pay our sincere thanks to the Adaramon Island Foundation, Ministry of Culture, Government of India, and Indian Council of Social Science Research, Government of India. Without their financial support, this seminar would not be We also pay our sincere thanks to the RMS Hospital, Hospital and Research Center Limited, and all India Hospital Student and Youth Association for their sponsorship and active participation. And we are also thankful to all our with users who contribute financially or any other form. We express our sincere gratitude to the entire group of universal meetings of community and to also including uh, uh, thankful to the Chattopo University Administration and Authority for providing the auditorium, guest house, newer, other communities, and other meetings, and any one of the two meetings assisted us either directly or indirectly. We are very thankful to the staff of the Division of Indian College for their invaluable assistance for this seminar. We are very appreciative of the active and substantial support provided by the European Memorial College and the Indian University team for this seminar. We would like to express our gratitude to all the participants and registration programs and stage management, all management, exhibition, certificate. And distribution for their education and endless cooperations. We also would like to express our sincere gratitude to everyone who helped us registration, book distribution, team, logistic supports, decoration, ideas, sound, videography, photography, painting, sanitization, and other tasks related to this area. We also thank the committees and individuals who are not innocent, they are part who provided directly or indirectly support in this area. Thank you. Thank you all. Thank you. Thank you, Shafanda. Uh, now I request Shandana Paul for an announcement. Thank you. There is an announcement. I request our Pro Vice Chancellor to give a memento to Dr. Sochira Ranga Chodhuri. Sir, please down the dais. Dr. Sochira Ranga Chodhuri, President, Bengal Homeopathy Chemist and Druggist Association, Director of Homeopathy International. Now I request our proof 
Vice Chancellor to be a memento to Dr. Kochi Goshami for his Ayush Ratna. Sorry, Kichu Goshami for his Ayush Ratna, National General Secretary, All India Ayush Director Sanjay. Dr. Sanjay. Now it is the time to felicitate our beloved presenters with pen drive as a gift. For this, I would like to request uh, Professor Amitabh Dutta to distribute the pen drive. <laughs> Dr. Pranabhi Pore, <coughs> Shudeshna Hajra, Rumpa Pal, Dr. Onam Kumar Rao, Ashik Iqbal, Ruby Acharya, Shudeshna Hajra, Rumpa Pal, Dr. Onam Kumar Rao, Ashik Iqbal. Ruby Acharya. Now uh, we are going to start our certificate distribution ceremony. May I now request Professor Gatta to distribute the certificates. Alanjita Dutta Ananda Dash Ananya Ghosh Andhra Chakravarti Onu Kumar Rao Ananya Ghosh Orindam Nath Ashik Iqbal Obhijit Haldar Vikash Kumar Haldar Ashik Iqbal Vikash Kumar Haldar Vishwajit Bhattacharya Vishwajit Dash Dipanita Sarkar Dipanita Sarkar Hafizul Mandal Indrani Dutta Indrani Jayashri Patra Azinur Rahman Ali Jayashri Patra Momita Paul Momita Paul Modu Chandra Dash 